The movie guys love movies. Any comments made about Hollywood's abundant, overindulgent, self-congratulatory award season are purely for and the award for outstanding warning or notification in a comedy, musical, or variety program goes to The Movie Guys! Thank you, thank you everyone. I just wanted to say, are purely for entertainment purposes only. We goof on award season, but let's be honest, it is the most wonderful time of the year. It is. Even in that bit that we wrote, rehearsed, and recorded, I got excited because I thought we might not win. <laughs> yeah, for a second. <laughs> it might not be us. Oh, and then I was it so excited us. when we did. Oh. Yeah. We let's let see. us win. <laughs> yeah, we wrote it. We really like us, as it turns out. <laughs> Those of you in the industry, it's time for screeners in the mail. Invites in your e-box to, to go out and see uh, screenings. They call it an e-box nowadays. The me box. Yeah. Uh, also, it's a good time for friends of Paul's and and mine because if I don't want to see a movie, you might get a call. That's oh. true. I might call the chain you to of come command see it. is this way. Karen gets first right of refusal, and then I say no to usually dude movies and anything that has like kid influence. Oh, we'll get to that. In a yeah, second. and then it goes to Vanessa. <laughs> Well, Happy New Year, everybody, <laughs> and welcome back to the Movie Showcast, part of the vast and sprawling Movie Guys empire. Should old acquaintance be forgot? Does that mean what we that we should forget old acquaintances, or does it mean if we happen to forget them, we should remember them, which is not possible, because we already forgot. You've reached ground zero for things, <laughs> movies, and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with rants, sketches, previews, characters, jokes, bits, special guests, and more. You can expect that in the next hour or so as we broadcast from the Admirals Club in the heart of Burbank Airport's flyover zone. And if you're new to the power of the Movie Showcast, you can catch us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Search the Movie Showcast or the Movie Guys and we come right up. And don't forget, we're also available on WBAD Radio, one of the fastest growing internet radio stations in all the land. At WBAD.net, Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's one here on the, on the West Coast. And you should go to WBAD.net. Mm -hmm. They just redid their website. They look awesome. Ooh. Yeah, we got, there's we got great pictures of us up there. Yeah, and they've been growing, and now it's yeah. like a really cool site with tons of shows. Always got programming mm -hmm. going on. And we're in the mix, so it's kind of cool. Uh, and always, if you find us, please subscribe where possible. Tell your friends, share, and post and videos and all that stuff at the movie guys on twitter facebook youtube wherever you find us my name is paul preston i am your host here with lee caius and karen volpe adam is out this week but he'll be back next week in the meantime we're happy to be joined by a returning guest film and tv editor extraordinaire mike j nichols hey, hey mr nichols hey. thank you for joining hey and where mike goes star wars talk isn't far behind and that will certainly be the case as we welcome our second guest later in the program, Star Wars fan filmmaker Robert Reeves will be joining ooh. us. Ooh. Oh, a mix of clap and ooh. ooh. Applause and awe. Yeah. Applause and awe, this of is course. Good. So, yes. I was going to say, wherever Mike goes also, planes follow. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. That was right on his cue. We had our first <laughs> plane of the, of the new year. <laughs> It is a two-guest showcast, as we mentioned, so there will be much geeking out with Star Wars talk later in the show, so stay tuned. But we begin with our signature movie previews as we prep you for what's coming out in theaters this weekend. This week, a pair of macho offerings as we kick off Manuary. Manuary. First up, it wouldn't, you know, it just there's nothing for chicks. Is it that time again? Yeah. That time of the year again? I love Manuary. Nothing for chicks in all this month. Oh. Sorry, ladies. First up, it wouldn't be right if Hollywood didn't make movies in Paris, so we're getting our first of two Hercules movies in 2014 with The Legend of Hercules, and Kevin Sorbo is nowhere in sight. And huh. later in the show... Bad guy. Senior Taliban commander with a tier one target. Trump killed 20 Marines last week. We let him go. 40 more will die next week. Going in with Dietz, Axelson, myself, Marcus. We have eyes on Shaw. A lot more than 10 guys. It's an army. That's uh, that's Lone Survivor. Oh, going uh, wide this week. It was uh, open for the time for awards consideration, but now it's did it get in time? Yeah. It doesn't have to be released. No, doesn't it have to be released before like the middle of December. What Mike? What's the date? No, on? no, no. That's why everything know? comes out right at Christmas. Oh, okay. I thought I, think, right? I thought there was a deadline. Yeah, but isn't the deadline at the end of the year? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I thought so it was. You said it did come out. It did oh. come. Jamie knows. It has to be in the theaters by 
theaters for seven days. That's why everything comes out on the 25th. 25th. Exactly. Okay. Uh, but was, was this out on the 25th? Seven days. Was this out on the 25th? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Happy Christmas, everybody. Jamie is with us. As yeah, as yeah. Our board up, Jamie. And the only thing that's that's making me hesitate about this movie... <clears throat> The only thing. The only thing, because I I want to see it. Mark Wahlberg. I'm I'll, I'll go yeah. watch him. Yeah, it's a bad time, Bob. It's never a bad time for Mark. Every other movie is going to be good. But the only thing that makes me nervous about this is the. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, oh, but he didn't go there with the, the trailer. dubstep version the of dubstep the trailer. Yeah. version. Did you go dubstep on the trailer? Really? Yeah, but that's more I think a curse of the trailer than the film. But then again, I mean, this movie might be too hip for its own good. You never know. But they yeah. could dubstep a Kubrick trailer just you know to do it. But it'll make me nervous because yeah. dubstep to me, you're hiding something. <laughs> They're not going to dubstep Wolf of Wall Street. They're not going to dubstep Schindler's List. They're never going to dubstep this year. a movie. <laughs> yeah, <It's>, you, know, <laughs> you know what? And Wolf of Wall Street is the hippest, slickest, fast yeah. moving, uh, crazy train of a movie, and they still just didn't need to do that for zero the dubstep. Yeah. Or and Wow wasn't even there. Wow, he wasn't even in the yeah. trailer. <laughs> when things slow down. <laughs> it has to have a sound effect, really? And now we're all used to it, so it's, it stays. Yeah. It's a war movie. It doesn't need sound effects. All right, but before I get too far along here, I want to check in with everyone. That's a very profound. <laughs> no sound effects in this war movie. <coughs> that would be a very boring that war movie. That would be a very boring movie. Uh, let's check in on... on oh, hey, let's, this is exciting. We did this what? last year. We'll do it again. We'll check in on New Year's resolutions. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> Resolution. <laughs> and that, now I remember. Dumbest theme we've that ever is recorded. Fantastic. <laughs> we played that last year, though, too. So you know. did, and halfway through it, I'm like, my headphone's not working. Oh, that's right. It's the song. It's all. Yeah, the Beatles are only one half on of your one head. channel. Yeah, the, the guitar's in the one channel. I'm like, Jamie, get. Oh, no. <laughs> Notice how Jamie didn't move. <laughs> She's like, yeah, whatever. You're an idiot, Lee. You, just hang on. <laughs> She's a music scholar. Catch up. <laughs> <laughs> one second. <laughs> it's the Beatles. Yeah. It's the Beatles. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> now, before we uh, actually check in on this year's resolutions, I want to take some stock and see how we fared adhering to last year's resolutions. All right. Because right? so I got to be honest with you, I have no idea what my resolution <laughs> last year was. Oh well, let's. We'll, this we'll, will be news to uh, me. We'll play mine first, and then we'll okay. enlighten you. Here's here's what I said last year. I will not be a summer movie completist. No, how'd that work out for you, Paul? Well, I failed again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now, and how did you fail? What were you watching just recently, Paul? Uh, what do you mean? Turbo and what was the... Well, that's summer catch-up. You know, <laughs> like, that's like, in December I can watch a movie from summer, but while summer's going on, okay. and I should be seeing Iron Man 3 a third time, I instead went <laughs> to see the internship. I still, you know, have that tendency to see everything. Now, it wasn't as bad as the year before. I made this resolution because I went to see what to expect when you're expecting. Uh, I Somebody had to. You know, yeah. and, you. and Battleship, and... Uh, well, that Rock qualified. Of ages. That qualified. The for watch. Me. I saw everything. Community service. Paul was working off some. Mm. Got some caught, time. Some, caught, caught littering, so he went and saw what to expect when you're expecting. But there's always some I still didn't go. I, I didn't see R.I.P.D. I didn't see mm. uh, Grown Ups Two. I didn't see Grown Ups One. So there you go. Well, you might have gotten confused. Yeah. <laughs> Smart move. Yeah. I went to After <laughs> Earth though, so I don't know. Oh, I'm man. still working on it, but I, I kind of still. I mean, summer comes along. I want to go see everything. Summer only happens once a year. That's Paul. right. So you might as well go ahead and see the movie. Summer's getting to be a longer season too, which makes it harder <laughs> on him. Well, when you see what's what's what to expect when expecting, it makes for a very long summer. I know yes. Captain America: The Winter Soldier opens April 4th this year. Does that mean that when summer starts? It does. Yeah. It doesn't it really. Does, yeah. Well, that's our like April. We're back in summer. Up. <laughs> I I, that means there's going to be a whole bunch of April movies that w might be summer movies that if I go see, I'll feel like a douche now and I won't be adhering to... But anyway, that's not this year's resolution. That was last year's resolution. Okay. Right. Well, let's talk about Lee, damn it, because what did that's I what do? he wanted to What do. did you resolve? I pledge not to allow a man crush to over-influence my opinion of a movie because, as it turns out, Premium Rush is not Oscar-worthy. Mm. <laughs> Okay, that didn't happen at all. This is, <laughs> it, this goes back to your I've, Joseph Gordon-Levitt man crush. Yes. And his Tom Cruise man crush. I may say, as a listener, uh, Tom Cruise is out, because that's still working this year. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tom Cruise works. But mm. um, <laughs> but I, now I have a new man crush that I have to manage, which is Casey Affleck. Oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he kind of came through with, uh, it, not so much out of the furnace, but I saw him interviewed on Conan. I'm like, oh, he's fucking cool now. Out now I, now I want to be him. Now I don't know who to be. I was going to be uh, JGL because he was cool. And then he plays the uh, the ukulele. Who? JGL. Does he? Did, did you see uh, 
Don John, did you even do that much? No. So oh. per, maybe, maybe to that, that extent, I was at least you know true to my word. But I still think it's a good movie. But Don John, at least you could have <laughs> yeah. accidentally seen Scarlett Johansson. Yes, that would not have been an accident. Your right. Whole, your whole thing was movies that there there are good people in movies, and then there are people in good movies. Exactly. That was yes, the distinction you the, wanted to make yes. as a viewer. Yes. There's a there, you you can be yes a good person in a movie or a m- movie in a good person. Uh, uh, Person in a good movie or a good actor in if a movie. Movies in a good person. Let me know if you see that. <laughs> well, that was that was Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe isn't always a great actor, but he's always in a good movie. But he's never really a good person. So where does that yeah. come in? Oh well, then now you're throwing a whole other layer. Right. Speaking of you, all right. This I'll is what you said. You. This is what you said last year. I resolved to uh, take one for the team from now on. Um, what I. What I mean is, a lot of times, I will not go Shut see up. a movie that I suspect to not be good, and I'll have Paul go first <laughs> and check it out for me, and if he thinks it's good enough to see a second time, then I'll go. Brilliant reasoning. Good use of time management. No, that's, the, that's your thing, but yeah. the resolution was to maybe break from that a little no. bit and expand your horizons. No, no, no. I, uh, no. And you, yeah, you didn't do it. I didn't do that. I still went to The Purge by myself. <laughs> 47 Ronin. Uh, I went to 47 Ronin by myself. You, went, the... you just went to Frozen by yourself and you even told no, me it was good. I'm like, I'm to. not going to that. You uh, should have. I was busy seeing August Osage County for the third you, time. You who likes me, you did not. Did I love that. Did you watch that. the screener? No. Oh. I've, oh, that's right. I can watch the screener. I <laughs> saw it ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see Riddick and I... No, and that... myself. That's what I would have had to have seen, right, Riddick? Can I imagine anyone blame me? If I were to bring you along, then you would say, look, what, if you love it so much that you go again, then I'll go. That's the best. That's a great I didn't. Those relationship. All right. all right, let's get on to 2014. It's a new year. Time to change your ways. So what do you guys have planned? Karen, Let's since we left off with you, hit me with your 2014 resolution. All right. So I resolve, and this is sort of like that other resolution, which I did great at. I'm going to see more man movies. Ooh. Man movies slash Good. boy movies. You know, because I really don't have a lot to say about them whenever we're sitting here talking about them in the show. And for some reason, it seems like every movie is about some super person or some person with like t- like long nails and shit. Manuary. It's always about some guy <laughs> blowing something up or <clears throat> somebody <clears throat> or escaping from some... Space would you, jail. Okay, I get it. What? Would, you, yeah. would you go to see one of those movies without me? Oh, no. Because there'd be no one there to... Make that your goal this year. Why? Because then there would be some new exciting ground for you. Oh, God. You and the girls make a night of it. Here's what you could go and yeah. see. Robocop. The Robocop remake comes out in February. There you go. That's so, a great so one to cut your I teeth I might on. see... You know, I've seen the real Robocop. I'm, I think I can count that. Silver Lining. It's got Michael Keaton. I... I like Silver Linings Playbook. All right. <laughs> you that could one's see, good. Uh, you could see 300 Rise of an Empire. Ooh. Oh, and then Ooh. we could watch 300 at home to get no, yourself ready for it. I am not into cartoon movies like that look like video games. Animated mm-hmm. uh, yeah, things. Right. Expendables 3. I have not seen the first two. I would be lost. Uh, you're trying. You're trying. <laughs> Uh, How's oh, this resolution coming for you? It's working out pretty I well know. so what far. Yeah, you're not even. <laughs> you haven't left the studio, it. and you're already shit. Well, I'm everything. just making sure I enjoy the movie. I don't want to oh, go and then yeah. diss sure, on this it. This is what you could be in for. Oh, I- For the record, unedited. <laughs> final scene of true, ro- final scene of true romance. Is that really? Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of emotional <laughs> content. <in there. laughs> ah, yes. How do you write that? Uh, What's the script look yeah. like for Don't that? And all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Gunfight. Now, if it, now, nonstop, how about that? You'll see that, won't you, with Liam Neeson? Uh, Liam Neeson is in it, yes. So that, that's, a, that's a breaker for you. No, well, I might give it a day in court because is he, is he wearing a shirt? Is I he? Have no idea. We, I think he's, I a, will I think find he's an out. air marshal. So probably. <gasps> That's very sexy. All right. Well, listen. Air marshal tail? Come on. <laughs> That's hot, dude. If you're up in the plane and some shit goes down and this really tall, good-looking dude protects you, hot. Okay, let's review the That's equation the, there. Hot. Uh, I, I think the crucial elements yeah. weren't in the air, weren't on a plane, weren't shit goes down. <laughs> I think the key here is tall, good-looking dude. <laughs> yeah. I think tall, good-looking dude could be, be making hot. donuts. Yeah. Air marshal's hot. If he's a tall, good-looking dude, 
Try one of the glazed. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jamie, am popular. I right? If you put yes. tall, good-looking dude in front of anything, Jamie's, you're probably right. Thank actually, you. <laughs> hey, did you see the guy that delivered my pizza? He was hot, tall, good-looking. Tall, good-looking dude. Looking dude. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, that could be my news resolution to make sure I see all the movies with tall, good-looking dudes in them. <laughs> like Terry Crews. Who's that? He's that big guy from Everybody Hates Chris. Oh, he's hot. He's oh in my the Expendables god. Three, and we're going. Oh. All right, this uh, year, let's right. get on to me. Did I uh, mention that that thing that we just played sounded like popcorn being made? Yeah. <laughs> well, That's why they call popcorn. them popcorn movies. <laughs> this year, I resolve, much like Karen, to see a genre of films about which I am grossly undereducated. That oh. being Tyler Perry films. Ooh. Every year, these four, five of them, eight, whatever, come out. And right. then we start to talk about them. We crack some jokes, but we really don't know what we're talking about because we've never seen one. No, we haven't. I you should know be I... the first guy to take the plunge for this group and go see a Tyler Perry movie. You know what I think has happened, Paul? Every time a new Tyler Perry movie comes out and we review it, I, I did some research. What happens is we actually end up watching the same trailer on YouTube. We just don't realize it's a different movie. Because we <laughs> haven't seen any of the movies, so they all yeah. look suspiciously the yeah, same Bidia to us. yells a lot, smacks a kid. Yeah. It's the yeah. same. We, we've been yeah. watching Medea Goes comedy. to Jail for four years now. Right. Now, the, uh, the one time we turned ourselves into black girls to preview for right. colored girls. Mm-hmm. Like with, we had magic powers back then. Right. But Adam, do you remember Adam and I did that? Yeah. We like, yeah. doodle, 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 and we turned into uh, Frederica <laughs> Meek and... Uh, and, <laughs> and and we uh, was I not yeah. here for that? No, it's hysterical. They it were was making. Funny. There was hysterical. They were in the kitchen. Oh no! Wait, they were out here doing it in our other version of yeah, our yeah. show. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm blabbering. Uh, but I was thinking, if you're going to actually go and watch the Tyler Perry movies, I went and got a list of the ones that are going to be released next what am year. I see? So get ready, cause you're going to see <clears throat> Tyler Perry's Single Moms Club. And that's the only one on this list. That's what? It? That's the only movie he's releasing. You knew this before you made the resolution. Oh, well, normally it's I seven or eight movies. All right, well, I'm going to go. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, 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 no. That, you should have to be a completist. Seriously. You have to resolve to <laughs> be a be. Tyler Perry completist. A t- 2014 Tyler Perry new release completist. No, you go back and watch all the other ones and give us a full report. Tyler Perry can't go a weekend without making four films. How is it that exactly. you picked the one year he makes a <laughs> film? I don't know. I don't know. He must have a TV show going. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, what is your resolution? <clears throat> oh, well. Paul, I thought you'd never ask. Um, this year, I have resolved to enjoy the public movie-going experience, to embrace the adventure that is going to the movies, and not to let the little things irritate me. Okay, so Good. from this day forward, mm-hmm. I refuse to allow those minor social annoyances to rob me of the joy of slipping into a dark room with a hundred other strangers, to be taken into a world of unimaginable fantasy, thrills, chills, and romance. Paul, that is my resolution. Well, that really sounds like a great resolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it goes a long way to show... For example, not- hey, have a phone call? Sure, take it. Don't excuse yourself into the hallway. Answer it in your seat. <laughs> I'm sure that conversation... <coughs> share that conversation with everyone. My guess is, if anything, you're talking to your wife about rescheduling your bunion surgery is only going to add to the experience of the movie. Okay. Right. Look slightly passive-aggressive. Hey, 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 family of five, huh? Couldn't get a sitter for the night? <laughs> Not a problem. You want to take in the Wolf of Wall Street? Hey, I understand. Crying infants are only par for the course. Oh, hey, know where to put that stroller? Go ahead. Just put it in the aisle for everyone else to trip over on the way to the bathroom. No, no, no. That's, that's what the world is here for, to get out of the way with people with kids. No, okay, Lee, I don't think... Uh, hey, well, what's that you say? <laughs> $14? A bit steep for a movie <laughs> ticket? Well, not when you think all that you're going to get for it. You get about 35 minutes of commercials and previews, and so that basically takes a two-hour movie into like a four-hour adventure, right? And when you, of course, factor in the trek to and from the parking lot, that is if you can re- remember where you parked your car. And Oh, hey, $9 for popcorn? Oh, I know. Sounds like a lot. Not when you consider that it's a delicacy, it's popcorn. It's not like you can get it at every grocery store or roller rink. Oh, and not to mention how, how loud movies have gotten. Paul, have you noticed how loud movies are lately? Yeah. Leo, this just sounds like a list of complaints. i got to be honest you with you. Know, Paul, call them what you will, Mr. Preston, but nobody is going to stop me from enjoying going to the movies, least of which the movies themselves. Hear that, movies? <laughs> Grandpa Caius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lee Caius, you now have a theme. The Grandpa Caius theme. I saw that on the script and I was like, I don't want to know what this is. Going to be. <laughs> all right. So, all those things you just said so eloquently. <laughs> Grandpa Caius. These are all things that I you have that. said all last year in different ways or in different movies, but. 
there there were stories about the people taking the phone call. Oh yeah. There were stories about the. We were in a movie where there was a baby. It was the horror movie. It was a late showing. And the baby started crying. It was up left behind us when we were in La Cunada. No, the one I remember even more uh, crazy was 12 Years a Slave. What? Like two young girls and, oh a, and a mother and father and their friend, their adult friend. They were horrible. Just two little kids. Two minutes in, iPads come out. I was going to kill everyone. Two and a half everyone. minutes in, we move. Three yeah. minutes in, they leave. I'm like, what is the point? Why are you doing Little this? kids. And when it, they decided to leave was during one of the early whipping scenes. Oh, my God. It's yeah, about like, a slave. You're like 30 N-words in. They yeah. get up and leave. You think? <laughs> they, they gave it a shot. Years a slave. Yeah, Unbelievable. So, yeah, I, I don't blame you for any of that. It's it's, it's kind of sad. sad though. That... It is sad because I have I have kind of become reclusive when it comes to going to movies. It's the reason I only go to the Arclight. In uh, in Hollywood and dude. alcohol. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> and because they serve alcohol. Too. Seriously, a sixteen dollar ticket that kind of keeps the riffraff out. Mm-hmm. That kind of you know thins the herd a bit. Well, Plus, no one's bringing in their baby if they're paying no, sixteen bucks. No. no. <clears throat> yeah. And now you've just moved down to Orange County. Do you got good theaters down there? Or are they I, all still filled with? Uh, I don't know. I went to um, a Regal. I think out at the Spectrum. But I. But now now Grandpa Caius goes before eleven because <laughs> it's six dollars. <laughs> That's like the early bird special for dinner. Oh, in the morning. <laughs> yes, oh. before 11 in the morning. Now, here's the thing about that, is that my tolerance level is in direct proportion to, proportion to how much I've paid for the ticket. That, that is oh, true. So though. at $6, I'll put up a lot more shit than a $14 ticket, uh-huh. right? So, uh, you know, I always go, oh, it's 6 bucks. You know, you expect some of this. So I love just waking up and... You're in a movie. Oh, yeah. You know? You don't even think about it. But I got popcorn here, and I'm just kind of getting awake, and then the movie starts. But it is... I, I do have a problem with the, the lengthy previews. It's like a half an hour of previews. Yeah. It, it, your, your whole yeah. day gets consumed by this two-hour I, movie that becomes... I, during award season, Paul and I go to a lot of award screenings, and the movie is the one you're going to see. So you go see 12 Years a Slave... They turn the lights down, and you see the movie, and you forget how great that is. Mm-hmm. And you're almost kind of like taken off guard. Like, whoa, I'm not ready. Yeah, uh, the I'm movie's starting. I'm supposed to kind of like emotionally get ready. Uh, you're, you're still sort of turning your phone off, and it's starting. <laughs> Look, I haven't, I'm haven't. i not done changing the kid's diaper. Don't start the movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, we haven't uh, wait, we haven't heard much from Mike Nichols. Let's hear from Mike Nichols. I haven't given him a platform to speak yet, so. Good. I mean, uh, what? No. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> kind of blended into the show here, but now I give you the stage, Mike. Uh, I don't know if you uh, make yearly resolutions, but do you have any that you're mulling over? I don't usually make New Year's resolutions, but um, we were talking about Star Wars, and and I was telling you that I got the the Blu-rays, the whole entire everything on Blu-ray. My grandma got Blu-rays once. You just put a little ointment on it. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And so when you see all the changes and things, those aren't the things that you're really excited about. But on those Blu-rays, they have all those making ofs that we used to see on TV. With PBS stuff. Yeah, all like that, all yeah. the all the cool stuff. And the and watching that again, and you see Ben Burt. Ben Burt was the sound designer of Star Wars and made all those yeah, things. Yeah, you don't have to explain that to everybody. Well, when she looked at me... <laughs> you're so stupid. Everybody knows that whole ben side Burt. of the table was like... Eh? I, don't know. I thought he... I was like, Ben that, Burt. I'm like, was guy, he... That, just was mystery? he Prince Caspian? No, that's <laughs> Ben Barnes. Go back to sleep. Mike? I was thinking Ben well, Burt. No, I was just saying that... Uh, there's that footage of him, and he he goes out to a radio tower with a guide wire, and he takes a wrench and he's banging on it. And when you hear it, I know it turns story. into a blaster from Star Wars, and it's like magic. And I thought about that; I've never done that before. Gone like to how, a radio tower? Like I know it's stupid, but all that time I saw it on TV, and I never went out to a radio tower and banged a wrench on that. Have and you done so that? I said, it's it's two thousand. What is it? Two thousand and fourteen. Fourteen. Sure. I'm gonna do that. Seize so I did day. actually drive around looking for a radio tower uh, today, which is harder because radio is uh, a little harder to find. Mm. But uh, I actually have some props. Oh, this is yeah. very exciting. Uh, uh, for those of you listening, Mike is bending down and picking up a, some sort. Of, oh, a sl- something. Should I actually, give it away? So a as slinky? a substitute. Um, All right. And a cup. So what he did is he would he would hit the the cable and it would make this uh, yes. the sound. But I found that at home you can sort of create these things yourself. Now I'm going to take a, a this just a regular slinky you get at Toys R Us. It's you like know, Doctor uh, Science. Egan, thing. just so you know, Egan had one of those as a kid, but he straightened it out. <laughs> right, and uh, <laughs> that's for me. A Ghostbuster thing for me. Okay, and you go take ahead. a styrofoam Mike has the cup. Floor. Go uh, ahead, Mike. A styrofoam cup. Yes. You might have to help me with this, Lee. What can I do for you? Oh, it was like a TV show making a salad. So or we something. have uh, okay. uh, this, and instead, I'll try to put this up to the microphone. Oh. Mike, shut up. So uh, if I let this. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've created. Awesome! The... Wait, let's have a let's <laughs> the let's improvise ever. a, a Wait, duel. You play Darth Vader. Can you do the red lasers, or is Darth that the blue laser? Well, that depends. He does you it, have to what? run it through some sort of a harmonizer. Okay. And yes, oh. 
Actually, I'm getting a little sloppy. I gotta stand up. That's what Everybody. I told her. So anyway, I felt really cool. <laughs> You're so dumb. Getting a little sloppy. Dude, I gotta stand awesome. up. That's awesome. Just wow. for the look at that, everyone. You can make this at home with a cup and a brought, slinky. And a cup. First of all, you brought toys, which, um, is, which is fantastic. The other thing is, is when uh, I was younger, too, you try to make sound effects. And I figured, why don't I uh, try to make some of this stuff out of things at home? Uh, this is. Oh, a he har- has a harmonica. Harmonica. Uh, do you remember the TV series uh, Battlestar Galactica? Yes, yeah. the old one. The new See, one? not the not the new one because they didn't really do it, but the old one. And so the characters Stop would it. say, "Do you remember anything that the Cylons used to say?" By your command. Yeah, by, by your command. command. So I found out that mm-hmm. if you take a harmonica and you just speak into it, <laughs> which is very similar what? to what, but I'm not very good at it. But, no, you uh, can do that with that berserk game too. Oh, intruder alert! Intruder, intruder, alert. intruder alert! Do intruder alert! <laughs> See, that's so, like intruder alert. This is like, you know, it's just like an insignificant thing. But if you uh, do it in a studio with like a professional talent. You get paid union wages. You can, I mean, you could actually make this sound <laughs> with it. You can make this sound they, like the real uh, Battlestar Galactic. So um, I had uh, somebody help me today and I recorded it. I think I brought that in for oh, you. Let's play that clip. This oh, is a clip right. uh, of this process. The studio. All right. Okay, we're recording. This is the uh, Harmonica Battlestar Galactica Cylon uh, Raider. And go. By your command, you are listening to the Movie Guys Showcast. <laughs> How's that? That was good. Yeah. I wish I could be on the show. I wouldn't mind taking a crack at Karen Paul's wife, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, we're actually still recording. <laughs> oh, shit. Turn up. Who the hell was that? That's, That's uh, fantastic. <laughs> That's you a know, choke a bitch. I was just gonna say they're very tall and good looking as well. <laughs> Take a yeah. crack mm-hmm. at Paul. That's. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got some. Wait. I'm gonna pull that. I'm gonna, or if if I were not uh, as old as I am. Yes. I mean, Twenty seven. What do you say? I wouldn't say. Wait, I just screwed myself in that sentence. <laughs> Basically, I'm gonna cart that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you guys uh, also had made a reference to I don't know what you call it You play it a lot on the show But that bong sound that's in all the bong. trailers Called in once you, Bong yeah. called in once Yeah, yeah we had him as a guest bong. A call in guest, yeah And so I was trying to figure out How I could duplicate that Using just regular home stuff And if you have a piano or an organ at home If I just See, that's just like a middle C mm-hmm. Yeah and it's that But if you record it And you turn the speed to 1000% slower Put a little harmonizer on it. Um, we recorded that as well. You can get an idea. Well, I got some studio clips of that. Here yeah. we go. Ah, uh, this is the uh, playing the middle C on a piano and turning it into a big ass explosion sound <clears throat> effect thingy. Take one. Okay, run it through the processor. Oh, holy fucking shit! Oh, Are you okay? That sounded yeah, like it yeah, didn't yeah, go yeah. well. We in the, the, the headphones were really loud. <laughs> oh, okay. um, oh, the magic of movie making. <laughs> that sounds like a dangerous trek for you to launch into resolution wise. But what else you got? What's He's still else? on. He's got some tin yeah, foil well, and some stuff. So I was trying to figure out again what else I could do. And um, <laughs> this is kind of famous. Um, if you just take this, is just a regular uh, staple. Is that the swing line or the Boston? No, actually, that doesn't even matter. It's just a regular <laughs> office staple. Oh, it matters. It Mr. matters Nichols. in office space land. And this is just regular aluminum foil. Uh huh. And if you, I can put this up. If you just staple this, now it doesn't sound like much when you do it, but if you, again, if you yeah. record it and you change the speed yeah. and you run through the uh, 20 hertz frequency, just a lot a of simple, simple adjustments. It Things you can do at of, home. Like it's, it's weird because it, you'll identify this. It's a, a very well known sound from a Terminator movie. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, just listen closely. I'm very you should curious be able to, to find out what this is. This is what it sounds like. Stapling. Oh, good for you. Kick your fucking ass. Uh, uh, no. I want you off the fucking no. set. You Don't prick. shut me up. The, the <laughs> fuck are you doing? doing for one fucking second? It's weird, right? It comes down to the studio, Amazing. really. Yeah. It's the studio <laughs> you know, effect, it's, right? It's the, it's the amount of equipment. Stapling yeah. tin <laughs> foil. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, thanks for pulling My, back the curtain on that. That was Mr. really, and it was kind of like something we never do on here, which is is in teach, you know, and learn and yeah. learn. It's like stuff. Bill, it's like Bill Nye, the actual science guy, was here putting the stuff yeah. together for the movies. 
Thank Wait you, Mike. For... Mike Nichols. Yeah, well Mike. I'll, I'll be checking in with you in June to see if you're still doing wacky shit with sound effects. <laughs> Doctor Science. But on to our first film. Ooh, we got awesome. movies. Oh, we have to do this. Uh, yes, right. can't wait for Brett Ratner's Hercules later this year and want to see an even shittier director's take on the subject? Well, then Rennie Harlan's The Legend of Hercules is just what the skittish, unlicensed alleyway doctor ordered. You know, Paul, having seen movies before, I can only imagine there's a plot that ties together this string of gladiator fight scenes together. Then again, I've seen Michael Bay movies, so plots aren't always necessary. Well, that's good enough for me. Let's talk about it. The Legend of Hercules, adapted from a Clash of the Titans lunchbox, features, <laughs> features history's original human growth hormone, Hercules, in an adventure that could only be released in January. Uh, let's uh, take in a clip here. Here we go. I will not stop until I return to the princess. Tonight, we fight for our lives! How will you offer these people their salvation when you cannot even save yourself? I think they employed some of uh, Mr. Nichols. Uh, Did you hear some of that in the background? homemade sound yeah. effects? I, I definitely one. think I heard the the slinky. Yeah, the yeah. slinky was very obvious in there. For those of you not raised in ancient Greece, Hercules was the legendary half man, half god son of Zeus who had a thing for more. Hang women. on just a second, you guys. What? I know that you have Lee previewing this film because yes. it looks like a big butch tough guy film, but actually. Jamie, you'll probably agree with me on this. This is actually a chick flick. Mm -hmm. It's it's got everything. It's got forbidden love. It's got hot men always getting wet. First they're getting mm -hmm. rained on, and then they're sweating because they're getting you know tortured. Then there's a scene where it's like endless love or something like the Blue Lagoon, where they come out of this water and slowly water drips off of this beautiful man, and he's just in this gorgeous lighting, and he's got these pecs that don't stop, and then all these abs for days, and I mean it's so good. All you have to do. Trust me on this, is just add It's Raining Men to that trailer and you got yourself a movie. It's raining men. I will not stop until I return to the princess. <laughs> That's Tonight, right. We fight for our lives. <laughs> yeah. How are you offer these people that <laughs> salvation when you cannot even save yourself? Dude, it's a Chippendales wow. movie. I'm telling you. You've opened my excited. eyes, Karen. And that's just listening to it. You should see it with that mu it music. It kind of sounds like less bullshit. <laughs> when you're telling me it's raining men, which is surprising. <laughs> Normally that's like you're adding bullshit to something, but that <sighs> took some away. Yeah, and so what we'll do is we'll put that together for the Movie Guys website, and you can go in there and watch these hot men to It's Raining Men. Yeah, all right. And also, I just want to say that I think that in part of the trailer, if you watch very closely, you're going to see that he actually helps Hebe open a jar of pickles, and he listens to a really long story about her day. He is a dreamboat. Dude, are you gay? All right, Karen, so I get you would like to join me in previewing The Legend of Hercules, right? If you don't mind, Lee. All right, Lee, you're out, so here we go. It sounds sexy. Let's in this do it. tale of godlike adventure <laughs> mm -hmm. that the producers hope you'll confuse with 300 and not Conan the Barbarian 3D, Hercules is banished from the kingdom for using performance-enhancing good looks and for engaging <laughs> in the forbidden love of a woman. <laughs> Hercules must fight his way back to Greece to depose the king and win back his love, but his journey won't be easy because he'll have to fight his way through other movies like Gladiator and Spartacus first. Just so you know, this is the legend of Hercules, so warning, there may be some exaggeration. Not since Curly's gold has a legend taken to the silver screen with such bravado. A crap bigger than you. <laughs> Having run out of Hemsworths, Hollywood has cast Kellen Lutz in the title role. Shut up, Lutz. <laughs> Clearly, this role will do for Kellen Lutz. Shut up, Lutz. What the most recent installment of Conan did for... What's his name? Jason Momoa. Right. The film is directed by 90s action auteur, former Gina Davis fucker, and Ooh. director of 10 <laughs> movies you've never heard of, Rennie Harlan. <laughs> so you know what that means. No. It's really hard to get kicked out of Hollywood. <laughs> Ooh, it's true. Yeah. In the original tale of Hercules, he must complete the 12 labors, including the most challenging of them all, when he went around sober, making direct amends to all the people he harmed. <laughs> Uh, Twelve something, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. the Legend of Hercules shows its authenticity by casting real Greek actors like Nikolai Petkov, Borislav Ivanov, <laughs> and Stefan Shopov. All hot. Yes, and it's filmed on the Greek Isle of Bulgaria. <laughs> Seems like every once in a while, Hercules is reminded that he's a son of God, and he can just tap into that power at will. It all just seems a little too convenient. Zeus Ex Machina. There's a whole series of sequels planned that are based on the remaining letters in Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> 
if this tanks, I fear the sequels will go straight to DVD. Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, Mercury. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's crazy cough. That movie's brought out a coffin. We should have played the uh, that song of uh, the periodic table. Magnesium, would you, aluminum. Oh, da, da, da. Yeah. Would you sing that for us? Oh, I would one. not. Yes. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, did you know that's what Shazam uh, meant? The name Shazam? No. Is that he gets his powers from old gods, I guess. And that was taken from a 1973 Shazam. TV show. Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Explain to Shazam. us what, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Shazam means what? It, wait, I'll tell you what. Chosen from among all others by the immortal elders Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, uh, Achilles, Mercury. That spells Shazam. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, they could have just. It's like superpowers, the way the letters come together. He's the Frankenstein. Word. The letters uh, are like Voltron. When they come together, they form a word. Ah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> But wait a minute, they could have just had that, like, you mess those letters around and you're going to have Maz has. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Shamaz. <laughs> Shamaz. Yeah. You, you could have Maz's. He decided on Shazam. Sam Shep. And there weren't enough gods to actually spell out Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> <So that's... laughs> Captain Marvel. There you go. Now, when you guys were kids, did you used to watch the Hercules uh, TV it was a little cartoon that hey, I would. Herc. Hey, Herc! Hey, Herc! And it would have a little Hercules, newt. Hercules, Hercules. And the newt would be I'm his a, best oh, friend. My little bit. Oh, he's a little Hercules. Show me muscle again. Oh, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> All right, that, that wasn't it, right? No, no, no that wasn't it. Okay. Play but, that again, please, Paul. <laughs> it's sometime can't, can't go before the All end right. of the show. Okay. No, what no, you talking I, about, I didn't see that. He's no, a little, little tiny Herc, right? Little tiny Hercules, but I used to like it because he had a friend that was half horse, newt. What was he? Hold, hold on, hold on. Might Please. have been Newt. It was Newt, wasn't it? Jamie? His name? Oh, my Why God. would you know this? And he would always repeat everything, and he'd go, Hey, Herc! Hey, Herc! Yeah, yeah. And I right love that, so I would start doing that to my brothers. I'd go, Hey, Bob! Hey, Bob! And he'd be like, Cut the shit. They don't like that when you You should have said, Hey, Herc. That would have been <laughs> flattering. That would have been cooler. Yeah. No, but when your little sister follows you around and repeats everything she says, less cool. Less cool. <laughs> And I should, you know, we goofed on Jason Momoa a little bit, but it wasn't his fault that the Conan 3D movie was bad. He was actually a very charming guy as uh, as Conan. But that's just it. a movie that you can't. But it's he can't come out you of that can't. movie, okay? You and you no. can't come. You can't be the next Conan after Conan. You can't be the next. You can't uh, be the late next night Conan cable either. Talk show host <laughs> yeah. after uh, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah, but he was charming. But just yeah, he'll be. I guess he's cast in the next Batman Superman movie oh, as yeah. something. So I like him, and that'll be good to see him again. I guess he's on Game of Thrones. So, so he looks good He's doing naked. okay. He's doing Are we okay. saying he looks good without yes, clothes Yes, Karen, he's looks okay without clothes I'm We're just trying my New Year's resolution. Now, this movie is not one that I would normally go to, but after seeing oh, the trailer... Really? You're going to go now. And I may wear headphones and listen to It's Raining Men the whole time. <laughs> if I don't go, you're still going. <laughs> I have yeah. a feeling uh, the story of this story of Hercules in this movie will leave me wondering, I wonder what the story of Hercules is. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of looks like one of those movies. Yeah. yeah. And what's what's the what's the logic behind it being a legend? Is it is it supposed to be the origin story? I don't know. Perhaps. Well, you know Hercules, the Thracian Wars, which I we referenced earlier, the Brett Brett uh, Ratner, Dwayne Johnson movie comes out this summer. So I don't know. Maybe I don't think they're they're working together, but they're kind of going chronologically. <sighs> I believe, right? That you were talking about. Something. Go ahead. Or maybe it's backwards. I, I was just going to say you just mentioned another movie that I would not normally go see. And if another you director. didn't have a New Year's resolution. <sighs> And another director that shouldn't be making movies, Brett Ratner. You didn't like, you didn't like, uh, I gotta give him Red Dragon. Oh, no. No? no. Ah, Mike. <laughs> right? No? No. Well, I mean, it's no Manhunter. Because we That's were what I'm saying. Okay. If you watch Manhunter and you watch Red Dragon, yeah. and you see uh, Ed Norton's version yeah. of, of Will Graham, even at the end, he's not, he doesn't change. He's but we were talking through. about this before the show. We were talking about Peter Berg directing um, the movie that he's directed. Oh, uh, yeah. the, the one Lone coming Survivor. up. Lone Survivor. Who's probably racked out on meth and completely around the bend and a total nut job. Really? There's a shortage of directors? We can't find somebody who's not strung out on meth to make movies? Hey, yeah. Mike, you're free, right? You're not strung out? No. Hey, there's your next guy. So why is Brett Rat Why is Rennie making movies? I don't know. I don't know. They I can't must get kicked out of know something about that's somebody. Right. That's, maybe that's why they have things like the... Uh, 
whatever the, all the communism charges from back. This is, we got to clear out a bunch of directors, put some new ones in. Right? I, I think it's what's called celebrity momentum. Like once you've become enough of a commodity, it doesn't really matter what your your content or quality output is. It's a name and it's recognizable, and we can go ahead. Although Peter Berg was from Chicago Hope, so I don't get it. I think what maybe what you're saying also plays in with actors and and writers and people like that, since this is such a hard thing to figure out how to become popular what it is that makes somebody popular what it is yeah. that makes people really get behind them since nobody can put their thumb on exactly how to do it whenever somebody gets that kind of momentum everybody who could make money off of them just backs up and keeps giving them stuff to do because no one knows how to do that on purpose i i think you might be right on that and the, the, clearly they have the magic beans so let's follow let's them. keep following them yeah. right, i'll give brett brett ratner the first rush hour that's good, right? Yeah, okay. He kept going back to the well, but the first yeah. one's good. All right. And I give Rennie Harlan Long Kiss Goodnight. Oh, that's right. Oh. Okay. I'll give Rennie Harlan one other one. And this that? is that, that one where, uh, um, I can't even remember, it's an Exorcist movie. It's the one where they used- Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, almost when they had the dueling ones, right? Dueling movies. Paul Schrader made the movie, uh, wrote it, directed it, made it. Uh, they tested it, and no one really liked it, but they put it out. No, they, they held on to it. And they went and took the same entire cast, basically the same movie, and had Rennie, even the same DP, had Rennie Harlan make a version of the movie, and that's what they released. And it wasn't great, but people complained enough that they asked for the Paul Schrader version. So six months later on DVD, <laughs> that comes out. And spend a weekend and watch both. You will be horrified at the outcome of which one you like better. Oh. Really? Really. Never <laughs> has this ever happened. You're saying it's Rennie Harlan. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. that I would like to see what you... I wouldn't be horrified if I like a Paul Schrader movie. But just think about it. The same DP, the same cast, almost the same props and everything. Wow. Two people making the same film, and one of them is clearly better. Hmm. Really? Crazy. Well, I, I'm a big Long Kiss Goodnight fan, and I when you had mentioned the Gina Davis, Gina Davis fucking, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's a great freaking movie. Have you seen this movie? I'm not, but I oh. like the fact that you heard Gina Davis fucking and, and went, like, yeah. well, right, right away. I like that long kiss goodnight. Count me in. Right away, I'm paying attention to the show. No, that <laughs> was a you great movie. For a second. <laughs> she was asleep until that. I Grandpa that Kai movie. was taking a nap. She totally pulled that off. Isn't that the movie that started the cliche of the explosion behind the person jumping? Is, isn't that the movie that... I don't know, but there's this great tough guy line that she totally pulls off. She's cowering <laughs> in like a, 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 a meat freezer and uh, she's trying to plot her escape and the killers are outside and they're banging down the door and she's figured out how to pour some gasoline so it drips underneath the door into the room outside and she has this long line of fuel and she's cradling her daughter in her arms and she lights a match and her daughter looks up at her and says mommy are we gonna die and she says no honey they are and drops the match and <laughs> outside the door the whole room explodes <laughs> I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Oh, that's fucking great. No, honey, they are. Boom. Oh, we could go on about Rennie Harlan all day. <laughs> Turns out I, I could. Yeah, but let's, uh, let's get on to our second film. The December release, as we talked about, that met the award season deadline. But now it's opening wide and looking for box office. Spoiler alert, Lone Survivor. That's right, Paul. Manuary continues. <laughs> it snuck up on you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does that sometimes. Yeah. And if it's Manuary, then it's time to mark. Manuary. There you go. As I was saying, if it is yes. Manuary, then it's time to arm Mark Wahlberg and get him to the multiplex. This January's Mark Wahlberg offering is Lone Survivor, in which Wahlberg dons a mask to clean up the Wild West with his faithful Indian companion, Johnny Depp. That's Lone Ranger. Oh, that's right. Uh, let me check here. Um, all right, I got it. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, this is the story of one man's valiant attempt to shoot John F. Kennedy three times all by himself. That's Lone Gunman Lee. Oh, let me uh, check here. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Okay, this must be the blood-soaked martial arts showdown between a Texas gunrunner and J.J. McQuaid. I don't know where you got this. That's Lone Wolf McQuaid. Oh. So, did you watch the trailers of any of the films we're previewing this week? I'm sorry, Paul. I, I just couldn't get into it. Have you noticed there's a new Godzilla trailer? Uh, priorities. Okay. okay. So, uh, Lone Survivor. Hmm. Uh, let me think. Oh, oh, any chance is this the story of a man rising up back on the streets? Did his time? Took his chances? No, that's Survivor the <laughs> band. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, in all seriousness, 9-11. Awesome. Okay, look, I got this. <laughs> 
Lone Survivor <laughs> takes place in Afghanistan as SEAL Team 10, a team four better than SEAL Team 6, attempts to take down Taliban leader Ahmad Shad and I presume his wife Felicia Rashad, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. who together have killed 20 American Marines, and nothing pisses off a Marine like someone killing a Marine, Ooh, yeah. mm-hmm. except accidentally saying they're in the Army. They hate that. <laughs> Now, when the operation is compromised, they're left stranded on their own with no backup in the Hindu Kush region, without so much as a gram of Hindu Kush to smoke. (laughs) What follows is a tense tale of heroism and brotherhood as they fight for their lives in the unforgiving Afghan wilderness with Taliban around every corner. If this movie is nominated for Oscars, then it stars Mark Wahlberg, Taylor Kitsch, Eric Bana... Emil Hirsch, and Ben Foster. If it gets no Oscar nods, then it stars Max Payne, John <laughs> Carter, The Hulk, Speed Racer, and Angel from the X-Men. And it co-stars New Mexico as Afghanistan. <laughs> now, Paul, the early reviews on this movie are saying that it is one of the most realistic depictions of war since Saving Private Ryan. I don't know about that. This doesn't look like Afghanistan. Now, admittedly, I don't know what Afghanistan looks like, but I know what I think it looks like, and I know what I think it looks like is what everyone else thinks it looks like, and it's not this. Mm -mm. Well, whether this is directed by The Kingdom director Peter Berg or Battleship director Peter Berg (laughs) remains to be seen. Either way, it'll be fun to try and make sense of what Berg is talking about in press interviews. (laughs) How many people survive in this movie called Lone Survivor? Well, that's anybody's guess. I just hope the guy that wrote the book gets out alive. Oh, it's based on a book. Yes. So, Lee, that makes it (laughs) an actual movie. There you go. (laughs) That Saving Private Ryan quote is from a guy named Bill Simmons who writes for ESPN. And so, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons, yeah, yeah. Like a basketball book and stuff. He's got like... The website. Bill Simmons. He talks like this. Adam Carolla does a great impersonation. And now he's reviewing movies, I guess. Is he? So. I actually kind of fudged that. They took that that, uh, uh, quote to heart. Well, I fudged it. I don't think he actually said it's a realistic depiction. He says one of the most heart I don't know. Oh, we didn't quote it exactly. Yeah, I I made it funny. They're using, basically, they're using a sports guy's quote (laughs) in their trailer. I mean, I, I expect this movie to be pretty decent because it is Peter Berg leaning towards the kingdom more than, you know, anything goofy. But, like, Hancock was not a fan of that. I feel that whenever I looked at the trailer, just physically looking at the partic- depiction of Afghanistan, having not been there myself, it just had a lot of green shrubbery. I just thought that was really shocking. There's a lot of pine trees. That's what I'm saying. It, that's I weird to me. I don't know what it looks like, no. but in my mind's eye, that's not it. So yeah. go go over to Palmdale or Lancaster and shoot your movie, because that would feel more <laughs> afghanistan to me. Or even Griffith Park looks more like what I think <laughs> Afghanistan After the would fire, look like. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. They, I have a new resolution for you. Maybe you should go to Afghanistan. Poke around, see what's going on. <laughs> Are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, go on a vacation. <laughs> very tall guys there. The very tall, <laughs> tall men Tall, good-looking men. <laughs> tall, <laughs> dark, handsome men. <laughs> good-looking men. All right, then. Yeah. Fine. I'll take Jamie with me. You'll I'll never see this see movie again. if I don't have to go to the theater. Oh, Deal. Geez. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but, 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 you know, the huge... Uh, oh, I'm trying to talk it up. Maybe not. <laughs> no, I, I, I have um, hope for it. I, I like the idea that is, even though we pick on the fact that it's based on a book, I like whenever a movie... It's er, based or, on real life, Karen. Oh, the book is based on real life. Commie. I know. What am I thinking? Uh, I like the fact that somebody had to sit down and figure out a beginning, a middle, and an end. So there's going to be hopefully some sort of arc. So something actually will happen. Sometimes these movies come out and they're not based on a book. So they never really go anywhere. Well, everyone will die but Wahlberg. And is he the guy you want uh, talking to a volleyball in your movie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> think of it that way. I don't even think he looks like him on the poster. So maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it, it doesn't end with just one person, does it? Well, I'm sure there are like Taliban. I mean, there's. I'm sure the title's misleading. I think the uh, because spoiler alert to NPR. Uh, spoiler alert! Uh, that's right. The title's and a you spoiler have a movie yeah. starring Mark Wahlberg, and it's called Lone Survivor. I don't want to give away the ending, but uh, yeah. odds on, they're, not, he's they're the not doing it in the trailer. But that's probably the deal. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, the trailer certainly suggests he's not the only one. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, NPR it say the legend of the Lone Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody learned. Somebody learned that's, but also, isn't Hercules the legend of Hercules? Somebody right. didn't learn there either. So maybe you're right. Maybe Tonto does show up at some point, <laughs> and he gets not. a sidekick. Sure. <laughs> that would be all right. Uh, listen, and I don't want to start on a thing, but this is about a failed mission under the Bush administration. and The Navy SEAL mission under Obama, 
was Zero Dark Thirty, and it got five Oscars. All I'm saying. Now, all right. Um, we'll be right back, and let me... Uh, and it wasn't released in January. <laughs> we'll begin the uh, Star Wars talk properly with our second special guest of the show, Robert Reeves, in about <gasps> ten seconds. Yay. Hang tight. Whee! Hanging. Nobody uh, mimes the bass. You ever notice that? Oh, did you to go to the bass yeah, last yeah. second? He was slapping the bass. If it's I'm Rush, sure that he will. Bass, yeah. Beat yeah. that dog, Benny. Hey, we are back uh, here at the Admirals Club, and I think we can all call our studio now the new Most Icely Club. Because <laughs> there's a, a crap ton of Star Wars nuts in the room. Star Wars uh, joining us now is a popular Star Wars fan filmmaker and winner of the official Star Wars Fan Film Awards, Ooh. George Lucas Selects Award. Wow. Robert Reeves, everybody. Hi, thank, you. thank you very much. And because, you know, there's no bad time to talk about Star Wars. You ever notice that? Other film franchises, you know, hey, if it gets to be Halloween, we can talk about blah, blah, blah. If it gets to be this or that, you can talk talk about Star Wars any time. And and in the last number of years, there's there's been news to discuss, too. I was going to say that and Tyler Perry. Anytime. (laughs) Well, Well, because that's my resolution. Anytime he has a movie coming out, it's always on the heels of another release. Hmm. Uh, Speaking of resolutions, do you have one, Robert? Um, A couple. Um, one was to be not be late anymore, and I got to your place early. You got a half I believe, hour. I believe that was great. I felt bad. You were uh, you no, 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 no. It, it was no, by no means meant to make you feel bad. It's just I had no idea how long it would take me to get here, and I wanted to leave myself plenty of time. And and of course, I got here in no time at all. So. Well, mission accomplished. Thanks. I, you've done that, and I still haven't seen a Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> so <laughs> made it you're better in. than me. He's already or released two of them. Past light speed <laughs> since, <laughs> since you started the show. He's right? been yeah. on two. Yeah. Well, He's been yeah, on two since we started the show. Uh, all right, great. So um, I want to talk about this uh, the, the fan films you've made because okay. uh, when did you start making them? Um, I believe officially my first one was probably, two, I'm going to say 2005 or four. I'm going to say 2004 because I helped a, another guy uh, make one, did the special effects for his movie. Uh, so was it? Were you kind of at the launch of that kind of thing that when it became popular? Or were there already a no, bunch? Because no, now there, it seems like they're all there, over the place. There were a couple of really good ones out before we started. There was uh, Troops, which uh, Kevin Rubio uh, did, which was uh, take off on cops, and it was absolutely brilliant. I that don't think funny. anybody's even come come close to making one that good, except for one called George Lucas in Love, that which was, was based on Shakespeare in Love. Uh, that came out shortly after, and he went on to do. Unfortunately, some forgettable film for Universal, but uh, um, that kind of we started. We have the uh, Empire from the opening of Star, Star Wars Destroyer. going that's, over yeah, the Star Wars. That's the first scene. Going over the Admiral's Club right should now. should be uh, uh, some laser fire here. Oh, I wanted to mention there are no blue lasers in Star Wars. It's uh. either red or green. Green? No. no yeah. Where did I see blue then? Uh, uh, oh, I was watching it on a too. really shitty TV when oh, I was there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> had a, a crap tube going. Yeah. They were yeah. watching yeah. in the basement. The parents yeah. had the shitty TV. Why were the stormtroopers wearing pink? That's what I couldn't figure <laughs> out. But anyway, go that, ahead. Well, you know, I used to watch Star... I'll say this once, and we'll go ahead on to something. I used to watch Star Trek on a black and white TV and swear I could tell the uniform co- colors. <laughs> my, parents, <laughs> my parents thought I needed to have therapy. <laughs> But That's I knew what funny. colors they were wearing on the black and white TV. So. Star Red, Trek or Star, Star Wars? Trek. Star, Star Trek. Trek. Uh, just in I'll general, in the world, Star oh. Trek or Star Wars? Both. Both? <gasps> mm-hmm. Ooh, you find yeah. room for both? I, I have. Uh, I had never heard that you had to choose before I moved to California. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that's our the way. same people worked on both things. ILM worked on both Star Wars and Star Trek. And, uh, you know, there was a time when I was, when I was younger that, you would alternate. You would get a Star Wars movie, then a Star Trek movie, then a Star Wars movie, then a Star Trek movie, you know, and then they would alternate until they, we ran out of Star Trek movies and we came out get going on with Star Trek. But it was just like, oh, you know, I'm a Star Trek fan now. Well, Wrath of Khan is out. No, wait, I'm a Star Wars fan now that Return of the Jedi is out. You know, yeah. so you just, you just, you know, whatever's showing at the time. I, I probably, I was looking for something to wear tonight and I have more Star Trek t shirts than I do Star Wars shirts. So I don't, hmm. I don't know what that says. I will give you a theory from Mark Tucci who writes for themovieguys.net. That he takes Star Trek because Star Trek would not give its fans Jar Jar. Mm. Uh. He says that's the decider mm. right there. For me, they were two it, vastly different things. Well, there there was yeah. really one science fantasy and one science 
fiction or space that fantasy. That was the distinction I was making, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. Uh, no, just to me, the whole feel and the, the, the tone and the attitude of both of them are completely different. I mean, Star Trek was much more socio-economical, socio you know, Had political, yeah. yeah. And, and Star Wars was an adventure. It yeah. was this great space adventure with wars and battles, and and Star Trek was just a bunch of tightly wrapped. Spaceballs is much closer to Star Wars than Star Trek. Yes, mm-hmm. but Galaxy Thank Quest you, is the best Star Trek movie ever made. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> agree. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, somebody once asked me why I never make Star Trek parodies, and my answer was that Star Trek is a very serious exploration of the of the plights and 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 and. And I, I got about that far and I said, dude, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, just, I just haven't had an idea yet for a Star Trek parody. So, so no. Yeah, you could totally rip Star Trek. Oh, yeah, and Ain't people no have. But if you notice, if, any, if anybody does Star Trek, it's serious. They do a serious – there's a couple – there's a one called Star Trek Continues right now. They're, they're doing serious episodes right now. Well, as if there was a fourth season. So. William Why do we talk about Star Trek? I'm William sorry. Shatner, <laughs> he is uh, kind of a parody show. of himself in those shows. So it's oh, yeah. hard to – Parody of parody. He does a wonderful job of being this character that's a little larger than life, yeah. but for some reason works in that world. Yeah. Oh, he's brilliant. He's he's ter- so, certainly turned his career around and, and made a lot out of it. You know, I just I think it's fantastic. The world's just merged because Carrie Fisher tweeted out. You see a picture of her hugging Shatner. Yeah. Oh, and they, they made up. Have they made up. And they made up because they had a feud going for a while. So, <laughs> I've always said this about William Shatner. He's he's a, a really solid actor, and he does the best impersonation of William Shatner Dundee out there, <laughs> next to Kevin Pollak. Yes, <laughs> Kevin Pollak, then William Shatner. Then William Shatner. That's hilarious. Hey, let's play a little clip from uh, something called Cheap Seats. Oh yes, this was a, a short that uh, Robert made where he plays a. Well, you, can, you can describe it. Um, I play a character named Bob Beefkins, uh, who is basically, this is in episode four, as uh, most people know it, Star Wars, uh, is in the uh, scene at the end of the movie, the award ceremony, and he's so far back in the hall, he doesn't know what's going on. All right, here we go. You know Red 5? Mine kept Yeah, I was supposed to be up there in that big battle. I was all set to go. This farm boy shows up out of nowhere, takes my ship. Wait a minute. That's him. That's the kid. That's him right there. You see the guy with the yellow jacket and the, the bad haircut? That's the one who took my ship. That's red five. You know, now all the radio presets are going to be <laughs> off. I'm going to have to readjust the mirrors. I don't even know if my insurance covers somebody else flying my ship. You need to give me my ship back, you little punk. Punk, 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 punk. <laughs> Sorry. My favorite of your spoofs. Thank you. That, mm-hmm. that was a group ep- effort, actually. We all said, what could be what could be messed up about the ship? And somebody said, oh, the mirrors. Oh, how about the insurance? Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> I love the radio presets. Yeah, yeah, yeah the radio presets. That was <laughs> another one, too. Every time you go to get your car repaired, they sometimes have they to take that computer yeah. off. And then oh, yeah, and it gets reset. And it gets reset. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to listen to It's always some rap channel I don't normally I always come back. Yeah, my, my presets are all to Mexican channels. Right? Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it, too. All I do is listen yeah. to the mechanic. music. The mechanic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my favorite part of that clip is the echo when I say punk and I added the punk punk mm-hmm. punk I laughed for five minutes when I did that I, I don't know why I just thought it was the funniest thing in the world and if you see the if you see the clip a lot of that is based on my experience in the Catholic Church where you don't know whether to kneel I don't go to the Catholic Church visiting the Catholic Church where you don't know whether to kneel or to stand or to sing or whatever because Bob's turning he goes what way are we turning well, there's, a, there's a whole big choreography going on yeah. we went to a wedding once and Karen walked up to the front oh, and shut. with me and we're like I, I knew what to do I'll be, you hold your hands out you get the bread yeah. you eat the yeah. bread and you move on and she, Karen gets up there and the priest kneels down and she's like Bless you? <laughs> <laughs> Did he sneeze? I didn't know what to say. I don't he know. Said, Bless you? People were sure saying felt, stuff. I'm sure he felt it. Well, and, yeah. and I, my, my, my grandmother was Catholic, so nothing against Catholic Church. Greatest respect for him, but it just, I was really confused. That, that, that was stand, sit, kneel, bow, stand, sit, kneel, exactly. bow, stand, exactly. sit, kneel, bow, stand, sit, kneel, bow. It's like an aerobic workout. There wasn't mm-hmm. a collar, though. There wasn't somebody saying, now you stand, now you sit, now you kneel. So. Ringing bells, doing a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes. This You made a spoof of the. Uh, uh, Original and now this film Padme that you won the award for yes is well, a is a shot by shot this is this spoof is, this is what oh, the award cool. looks like wow oh we oh have God. the award here That's it's really cool award. check That's that out award. but we made two films so we actually got two trophies oh hey. very oh. cool so, this is for cheap seats this is for Padme all right so uh, okay. so here. Robert has yeah. brought out uh, two on. awards for. That he won for the uh, George Lucas, what was it, the Star Wars Fan Film Fest. They called it, uh, oh, they changed the name. To come. Don't pick it up by 3PO's head, by the way. Okay. Um, <laughs> Did you do that? No. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
a filmmaker whose name I'll remember in a minute did that, and he uh, he got in trouble for it. It broke right on stage. Um, what was the question? Oh, the, well, I was just showing these off, actually. Are they, they supposed to be cool. different colors? Uh, different process. Uh, 2005, 2008. Oh, okay. Right. So, well, I didn't um, know if one was significant for something well, else. Well, the, the last one they made, they just spray painted, so I don't know why oh. they did this that. This one was dipped in honey this gold. dipped in gold. Guys, this is so cool. The, C-3PO's I, got popcorn. R2-D2's got, got a, a drink. little drink. drink. Would, it, would it kill you? Look. Sorry. It's would a it kill you to dust these once in a while? <laughs> really sorry about Are you really that proud? I'm really Look at sorry this. about that. I don't, the I don't the usually, filth in the I don't muck. Usually Look at that. Them. I don't usually touch them. <laughs> I think it's good. That it's a good sign that a filmmaker wins an award and he's so comfortable with himself and he knows he'll win more awards. He doesn't keep dusting. He doesn't dust. Now, he like, told me something. I'll dust a new one. He told me something inside. What did you say about this? You didn't care about anything else as long as they gave you this, oh, right? All I wanted was the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, when the Star Wars <laughs> fan. Fan Movie Challenge or the Fan Film Awards, depending on what year this is. Um, that's nice. Nice picture. Um, they had, when they first started, they had a cash prize. Actually, the first year, they had trophy, cash prize, and a visit to Skywalker Ranch. Oh, okay. wow. Second awesome. year, they dropped the skip, uh, tri- trip to Skywalker Ranch. Because of the graffiti. St- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> somebody because somebody <laughs> told the, uh, stole the Yoda statue and ended up in a mall down, down, uh. In, uh, uh, down in Oakland. But the... Uh, the this the year we won uh, for best comedy. We actually got a, a nice check from from Lucasfilm. Great, but I, but I said I just want the trophy. I mm-hmm. I don't care about the money. I just I, and I wasn't even sure they were doing money at that time. I said I just want the trophy, and I was thrilled to death to get the trophy. And then we got another one for Padme, uh, which this is, is so cool. Uh, kind of a prequel, I guess, parody, uh, but it's actually taken off of Juno. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, shot by shot remake of the trailer. Am I right? it, it is ex- exactly shot by shot, <clears throat> and um, it. We got a great actress to play the the Ellen Page character. Uh, Lisa Vendette did, um, who's Lisa Blake now, did um, did a great job of that character. I have a small bit part being Jason Bateman for a day. I was thrilled to death. I was trying to do Jason Bateman as, <laughs> as the dad, and um, just be dry. Just be dry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, him. A, a, Her. A, him. What? Her. 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 Yeah. Um, so I actually I actually nailed his uh, line of uh, uh, when he goes. When she's when he says in the original trailer, uh, says, "Oh, Juno, like the city in Alaska," and she goes, "No," and he goes, oh, "Okay, sure." Something like that. <laughs> and I did my I did my version of that, and and I I'm told I did a good job. It only took 15 takes, but good, good for you. The um, good thing you don't have Fincher directing. Exactly. So. The um, uh, we the parents were uh, Obi Wan and Mace Windu, which I didn't quite agree with in the in the script, but it, it kind of worked. And so, uh, but it, no, it was nice. We got it's it. progressive. Yeah, we got um, we had Anakin with a Darth Vader mask and a in a, a tracksuit, and it was just it was strange. It was in contemporary twenty twenty first century Los Angeles, but it had little Star Wars elements, had lightsabers and stuff. And, and so, stuff. Lucas specifically. Chose the neat that. thing about this one, and I'm not sure about this, but the neat thing about this one, he actually saw this movie. He actually sat down and watched Padme, and I don't know if he watched them all, if they just say, here's six we like a lot, pick from that. But he watched it and said, you know, of the ones I've seen, I like this one the best, give him the award. Cool. And when the award, now he wasn't there, but when uh, the award was handed out at Comic-Con, they actually had George Lucas up on the screen, and, and he said, and the award goes to Robert Reeves, for Padme, and I'm going. Oh my gosh, that's me. He knows my name for at least five minutes, and, <laughs> that's and cool. that was fantastic. And so, yeah, it was it was it was really awesome. But I do have to give credit. That it's not wasn't just me. Um, I worked with two other guys on this, uh, Jason Ginsburg and Kevin Walsh. Kevin Walsh wrote the script. Jason Ginsburg played almost every character that has a mask in this. He's like the Yoda. <laughs> he's like the Emperor. He's he's Anakin. Mm-hmm. He's the Darth Vader guy. And uh, Kevin had a small part as Obi Wan, but he wrote he wrote the script. Uh, he's the one that came up with that idea originally. Do you let them take uh, turns with these on the shelf? Or? Oddly enough, we did have about a two-year period where we traded that off every three months. Like yeah. we, w- we would meet at uh, we'd meet at uh, Bob's Big Boy and and hand this off, and it would reside in each other's house for about two months. And think about being that person who's in from out of town, just going to Bob's Big Boy to have lunch in Hollywood, <laughs> and then they see these guys <laughs> with this crazy ass trophy, and they're like, "What is going on over there? Why is C three PO holding popcorn?" <laughs> oh. It was extremely aggravating. I will say this. This is impressive because uh, the, the true sign of any worthy award mm-hmm. is its heft. It does have heft. This has yeah. a very heft. I yeah. mean, Those aren't could, hollow figures. Are exactly. They? I think no, it's, yeah. a great, uh, it's a great trophy. Yeah, yeah, you could is. certainly bludgeon somebody. Yeah, you, you, definitely, <laughs> you definitely could. Yeah, it was the director of uh, Pink Five who picked up his, uh, his award by the head and it broke. 
So. That was not the first choice. Like when I picked it up, I immediately I, thought, I don't think I'm going to pick it up by the or two or pick it tiniest up like an spot. Oscar, it is. It's like, like a like mug this. of beer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about the right size, isn't it? Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever met George Lucas? Uh, no, I have not. No? Um, I've been in the same building with him. Uh, he did something at uh, uh, the SIGGRAPH convention um, at the LA Convention Center. I was there while he was talking but uh hey, we went to a whole q a about yeah, effects and stuff at the awesome. uh yeah at the fox that's lot awesome. oh is that where you learned the slinky trick <laughs> no no that was but what i was telling him earlier is that is actually where they gave cards out how many people were there paul I would, uh, oh it was a full theater so you know 300 and they gave us all cards to ask questions and i was saying yeah, that i that, asked yeah. two and then paul read my first question and went no no, 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 no. <laughs> so he gave me his card <laughs> and then i asked the second question which is the uh the 20 minute answer that george lucas yeah, gave so they awesome. used my question wow ah, good you're, thing you're, paul edited you which you're, was you're, well, the well, first the question first, was sorry. why is there not any flubber in this movie? No, <laughs> I, w- w- we were talking earlier. I said that he, w- what was the first question, and I said, well, if you had your Kurosawa movie, and I know that you really value that, if somebody came along and wanted to give you the new and updated version of that movie that that you love so much, would you give up your oh, original? Yeah, that's right. Or would you hold on to it as <gasps> sacred? Would you, would you accept that? Yeah. And. No. Really that was the that question. Was I gave that to Paul. And he goes, <laughs> "No," <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me and he gave me his card. And then I wrote on the second one, "I'm like, how do you feel uh, the movie industry would have changed the post production if the edit droid would have taken off?" I show that to Paul, and they're like, "That's the question." He talked on, like they had to stop him. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> All right, so this is where I help Lee and yes, I. Yes, yes. What is, is edit, edit droid? droid? <laughs> I was thinking the same what thing. The hell is it you could probably explain better together now. <laughs> you know what laser discs are. Yes. It was kind of like if you had a bunch of videotape of all the footage and you had five of them that were playing mm-hmm. on a screen and you could make an edit decision with one and then the other one at the meantime would fast forward to the part where it would start playing again. Mm-hmm. So as you're watching it on the screen, it looks as though you're seeing an edit, but it's really things fast forwarding. Well, when they put it on laser disc, they could make that be almost instantaneous. Oh. So all the dailies were put on laser disc and they started ed- editing the TV show Young Indiana Jones with it. Yeah, yeah. And when they were doing that, I was like, this is amazing. This is really cool. But then a company called Avid came out and did it on a computer. Oh. And everybody goes, well, that's actually, uh, you know, it's better. <gasps> so they bought uh, Edit Droid. And that's how saying. Avid started? It was started at the same time. It's just that's what took over because it was a, it seemed like a better plan. I think mm-hmm. I speak for this half of the same. table it when is. I say this is the thing he responded twenty minutes to. <laughs> yeah, I, like oh, it's it's like like one of his baby. Oh, oh, he's, he's, an, he's an editor. I mean, well, but so did, that's he he invent he did he invent it? Did he? What's that? Did he invent it? It was his. It was his something idea. that he asked for. As and he's asked okay, for. Okay, see, hey, this would have been important for us, Karen, to know. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Good to know. See, we're learning again. This is good because us and Adam's mom now know what editor is. But that does sound like a really clever piece of technology. For then, yeah, it really was. Yeah, it was probably, you know, would have been the standard if somebody didn't come out with a computer thing right away. We, we would have used that for however many years until, you know. Because how many people edited on VHS until, you know, with their little the things. And oh, yeah, the things shuttles. Like, I remember the, the, sh- yeah, the shuttle edits. I mean, that was so much better than hooking up a camera to VCR, which I, I used to do. Mm-hmm. And on a recent note, you know that somebody bought an edit droid laser disc. Oh. They originally started to edit uh, Return of the Jedi uh, with, with the edit droid, really? and they canceled it, but somebody s- sold... Do you know about this, Paul? Mm-hmm. There's a Facebook page for it. Uh, wow. So a laser disc was sold on eBay for about $600, and okay. it contains dailies from Return of the Jedi, and some of them are god-awful, by the way. <laughs> it's Yoda and Luke interacting, and it feels like that scene where... Uh, in Apocalypse Now, where he just said, I'm just going to make stuff up. Oh, I swallowed a bug. Like, it feels like at times, Frank Oz is just making stuff. Ah, he's your father, whatever, you know? Wow. Sometimes it's good to know that even things that are complete classics and really original kind of sucked at some point. Yeah, there was some sucking in there. Well, we were talking earlier about the original edit for Star Wars, how it was, we were kind of talking about how, or I was just saying it was amazing that Star Wars came out in the 70s but did not look like a 70s movie. And apparently the original edit was very 70s, very just by the book, you know, wide shot, close up, you know, mm-hmm. over the shoulder stuff. And it was extremely boring, apparently. And so, Script-wise, too, it was very boring. Well, right, exactly. And then and then they went back and it was George Lucas's wife, Marsha, who, and I'm sure a couple other guys, but they got together and said, no, let's do it like this. And George says, do it like this. And all of a sudden you get, oh, my gosh. This is a great, a great flick, and then 
things start be, being edited like that. Unfortunately, Star Trek the Motion Picture still edited like a 70s movie. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, but, but, From a know, guy who directed way back in the 50s. Yeah, exactly. And not that he's a bad director. It's just that wasn't the way to go for Star Trek. You but know? you just mentioned something that made me remember when Phantom Mes- Menace was on its way out, was, was coming, was announced to come out. I remember thinking to myself, the Star Wars were made in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And, and science fiction movies made in that time had... All science fiction movies made in their time have a fashion influence of the time. And when you go back and look at 2001, their outfits are clearly 60s, you know. All the hairstyles. Co- the hairstyles. Yeah, those, the, yeah. the, the, the pants are cropped. You know, everything has a, a fashion influence. So I was very curious to see how Phantom Menace, which is supposed to take place before Star Wars, right. would adjust for a fashion sense of its time. And, and that <laughs> explains the poodle skirts. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're getting at? That's, no. I was like, why? Why does everyone have a, a ducktail haircut and Just poodle skirt skirts and uh, you know Mary Janes? Why are they all? <laughs> why? And why are their jeans cuffed like a half an inch at the bottom? And it's because they well, had to the cigarettes in the sleeve. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that was something I thought about. I was like, well, we're going to be making this movie now, right. and so costume design and set design and all that stuff is going to influence the the look of that film. Um, but I don't think it actually disrupted it. I think it. You well, know, everybody wears bathrobes. So they it never go out of style. Clearly, not a big problem. Well, you could nitpick a bunch of things. You know, like R two D two can fly in this one you because know, why can't he fly in the? So uh, why can't he fly in oh, the other? Because yeah. they thought it would be a cool idea, you know. But then they, you know, they kind of blow that kind of stuff. Yeah. When they get inconsistent, just because they can, you know, the two ended uh, lightsaber, lightsaber that Darth that Maul weird. has. Yeah, you don't see those anymore in the uh, well, which purple the, which lightsaber, the, which the trailer yeah. totally ruined too. That would have been a nice surprise. To find out that that was a two bladed lightsaber, but the trailer ruined it. Trailers ruin things. Yes, That's what I have they a friend do. who will not watch trailers. I used and to he's not. He's a big movie fan, but he will not watch. Trailers. Yeah, I used to not. Then we start doing you the kinda, show, and you have to. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make jokes? No, we have to make fun of them. We don't have the mojo to uh, go to advanced screenings, so we watch trailers. We make jokes. Gotcha. But you know what? I realized recently on a on a show, I called into WBAD's Christmas party, and you know, it was then I realized, hey, we're like. F- by not going to every movie and reviewing them, we're free to not go to shit movies. So and, that's like a bonus. And you know what's even? I'm, I'm even luckier because you go to the movie first, and if you think it sucks, uh, I don't have to go. go. <laughs> now, speaking of better. shit movies, the prequels. Yes. <laughs> um, Thank goodness you didn't say uh, say my movie or yeah. <laughs> Cheap Seats Two or something like that. There Actually, was a, there go, was a sequel, by the way. Let's go back. So you were talking about the original edits. Do you think Disney will ever release them now that they're in d- uh, new hands? Now that Lucasfilm is in new hands, will Disney ever release do a thing where they put out the original edits of the first Star Wars movie? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, you they're know. they're really big into sequels, Disney, you know, in general, and I think that's why we all of a sudden are going to get seven, eight, nine. It's because they're like, well, we we love sequels. I mean, Disney makes sequels to everything, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just good luck that Toy Story <laughs> two came out in the theaters instead of on video. Someone said, you know, this movie's really good. We don't we don't want to give this to the babysitters. You know, this is. This is the movie that needs to be in the theaters. Um, yeah, that was a great film. Mm-hmm. But do you think now uh, it's in good hands with JJ? You know, it's my same argument about um, uh, JJ Abrams for the folks at home, not Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> <laughs> Adam's mom. <laughs> what's what's his name? Is playing Captain Kirk now? What's his what's his name? Chris, Chris Pine. Thank you, Chris Pine. <laughs> Jamie's all over that. Chris, Chris Pine. Pine is now going to be Jack Ryan. Okay, yes. he's Captain Kirk and ja- Jack Ryan. There are other people in Hollywood that are fully capable of doing these things. I don't think well, Robert Downey Jr., Sherlock Holmes, and Iron Man. You know, not that either movie was bad, but it's like J.J. Abrams doing Star Trek and Star Wars. I'm sure there's somebody else who could, who's very capable of doing Star Wars. You know, that didn't reboot a beloved franchise already and is going to do it again. He'll probably do a great job. Probably do a fine job. I mean, we'll just have to do this with the lens flares. You know, and, and then with the, from the lightsabers or whatever. But I, I think they should have given somebody else the opportunity. I don't I don't think that you should have one or two people doing everything. It's you know, it's just like they're the pop every time Oscar season comes around, there are the popular actors and the popular actresses mm-hmm. that get noticed. They're not necessarily the best performances of the year, but they, they're the most most liked at the time. And by the same token, there are people that are the most disliked that don't even get Notice for good performances. So. Well, Again, one of the things I thought yeah. they had going for the new film, Episode 7, was that it was written by Michael Arndt from Pixar. And I hear he's out now. He's, yeah, he's been out for ah, a while. son of a... Hmm. 
Yeah, because if there's one thing you count on with Pixar is solid story, and the one yeah. thing the new Star Wars movies will need is story. And but now George uh, Lucas himself said it: a special effect <laughs> without a story is a very boring thing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's right. Yeah. He did say that. Yes. <laughs> and then he, he did it or not. Yeah. Then he had Django Head Fett fly because <laughs> he thought it would be cool. Well, about the prequel. I mean, about the prequels. One thing I always get asked: you know, do you like the prequels? Which trilogy do you like the best? And and I will say yes, I like the prequels. I love Star Wars, but I like the prequels. And the prequels have, each one has elements that that are worthwhile. I mean, if you take Episode One, which is arguably not the best of any of the Star Wars films, it's kind of like the Star Trek Five of of the Star Wars films. Sorry, William Shatner, but um, <laughs> the uh, thank you. You've got you've got uh, Qui Gon Jinn, uh, Liam Neeson. Oh, tall, gotta looking. like that. Yeah. Tall, good looking. Tall, good looking. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, his, In a bathrobe. His first action role, wasn't it? Because it was like right Dark after Man. Schindler's it. Okay. No, that's true. Yeah. Dark Man. Dark Man. But then he then. took off. Then he started doing tons of action after that. Yeah, then he kind of a spring yep. action movie every year from Liam yep. Mason. You got young Taken, Obi-Wan, unknown. Hugh McGregor, who I'd watch in anything, and Darth Maul. In, in the big fight at the end, which I thought was all kind of worth it. And, and Natalie Portman, you know, which <sighs> is nice to have too. Hubba, hubba. Um, but you, <laughs> episode two, you've got... You've got um, uh, just what go to episode, episode three. Two? Yeah, episode three, the fight between <laughs> Obi Wan and Anakin is re- is really good, you know. So, or, uh, digital Yoda, I guess maybe in the second one. But it, you know, as movies, movies, at, at, it's hard to watch Phantom Menace because it just, you know, you're just sitting there watching it. Actually, I made a note. I saw a digital screening, a, a digital copy of episode one, and that's when it started right away. It's oh. like it was a seven o'clock movie started at seven. That's o'clock. exciting, right? There was nothing. It was like <laughs> yeah. we sat down. We actually sat down. The movie started. Oh my gosh! You know, yeah. But as soon as we sat down, we're like, "This is gorgeous." You know, we hadn't noticed the difference right right away. But anyway, I'm rambling a little bit. But the um, yeah, those things you like about all the movies, and I guess I could kind of Jar- say that about Jar Jar. Yeah, Jar Jar led to a digital Yoda, and which I thought the, the digital Yoda was really good. And if you have to do Jar Jar to get that, then it's kind of worth it. Because that was kind of the, can we do this? Can we make a, a character that can stand on screen by himself digitally? You know, whether he was annoying or not. But then you get a Yoda that's digital, which is really cool, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. Whether he's annoying or not is tough to swallow, though. Because he, he can still test the waters technically and have him be a decent character. But he was just a lunatic. Well, yeah, that's that's well trod. He was uh, he was done for the kids. He was done. For, George Lucas said, "We're still I'm still making this movie for twelve year old boys," and that's what that was in there for. But right, then, just but like got, in uh, Star Wars when he made these guys R two D two and C three PO <laughs> were more than happy. I'm sure when you guys were kids, you loved that shit. I would want a trophy where with just a dead Jar Jar. That's the trophy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've seen Jar Jar and Carbonite. Oh, uh, there I've you seen, go. That, that sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that was pretty cool. My, the coolest thing I've seen recently is a, a refrigerator, but the front of it is solo and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the stand, the drink stand, too, that you can have in your house that lights up. Looks oh. like It looks like the whole room, the carbonite room. Oh, nice. It's like $20,000, though. Oh, well, yeah. Mike, Can I comment on one. the J.J. Abrams thing, though? For, uh, exactly. You know, yeah. it's, that, that, it it's, like that, it's that, that fingerprint thing, because if you remember, the Star Wars movies do not start with a star ring or who the director is or any of that stuff. They just start. <laughs> That's right. Words go up the screen, and it was never ID that this is a film by any play. It let it speak for itself. Yeah, they didn't make a big deal about Richard Marquand. They did it, and and, yeah. and and they got in trouble for that too. They, they they the studio said you have to start this way, and they went, no, we're not doing it. That's why he dropped out of the Directors Guild. Exactly. Yeah, because he put his name before Irvin Kershner on the second one, mm-hmm. and that's uh, why but, Steven Spielberg couldn't direct a prequel. But anyway, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, just the whole idea that not not uh, I'm fine. You know, there's J.J. Abrams, and I'm like you. I think it'll be good, and I like his tastes and stuff. But I would have been fine with it being someone I might not have ever heard of before. Ooh, see, like George Lucas. Maybe or like a George Lucas before I knew who George Lucas was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or you know, how many people did you know in the original Star Wars? None. You know Peter Cushing, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and well, I think we on the Universal tour they do this. Who was considered before? Well, Burt Reynolds as Han Solo. Are you kidding me? Oh. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sorry. He was great at smoking. <laughs> Nick Amanda, Nolte. <laughs> Nick Nolte is Luke Skywalker. Reggie. Yeah. And, <laughs> though Kevin Spacey, he did he did a bit on Saturday Night Live that was absolutely brilliant. Walter Matthau is Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. But uh, look it up. But uh, I love that it was unknown people. I yeah. love that it wasn't stars of the day. I was a little upset with the prequels, actually a lot upset with the prequels, that it was people that were already established stars. Mm-hmm. Mainly because I was old enough to audition for Young Obi-Wan, and I was a little ticked off about that. <laughs> but uh, And you're speaking of in sync, correct? That's the... 
the issue that you have with the casting in sync. In sync. Ah, oh, never mind. We'll the, come the, back. No, in sync. In sync was played heavily made up characters in. Uh, in, 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 in third in, one? No, in the second uh, one. In the second one. They Shut were part up. of the oh. Jedi oh. Council in the second one. Yeah. It, was not, it didn't make it in the movie, but. Oh, okay. So Lance no, base was. Oh, really? Just, no. Oh, really? Well, they oh, cut that. God. I thought you just couldn't tell who they were. No, that was cut. Oh, Lucas remained, though. That's the one I'm thinking of. Lucas made up himself and put himself in the He movie. was in. Yeah. That was three, right? He was he was uh, the blue guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in sync is cut. So, like, that in sync thing is like stunt casting, right? Totally. Ugh. Stunt casting, that's a good way to put it. I, wow. I don't like that in a movie Me like either. that. You know, I, I didn't think it needed it. I think we should have found the new stars of today to be in the prequels. I, so I love Abrams. Again, I love Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson, both in those roles. I thought they were great, but it might have been nice. You've got a good sorry. point because they already have a franchise that they know people are going to go see, so they don't need to don't rely need on star yeah. power. And that you're not true. expecting the you're not expecting uh, Mark Hamill in in Harrison Ford. So this was, I agree with Karen and I agree with you, this was the perfect opportunity Mm -hmm. to cast completely unknowns. No one would have wanted it. No one would have expected it. We weren't looking for, uh, you know, Harrison and Mark. And this would have been a great opportunity to, and and because that's how it was introduced to us in the beginning, completely palatable. And everybody would have gone anyway. Yeah. Uh I remember as a kid watching the the Star Wars episode four Mm -hmm. in the theater Mm -hmm. And my too. my little seven year old mind being blown because it's the fourth episode. Like immediately, I'm in a panic. Like, what did I miss? What did What's I miss? going on? <laughs> and so I wanted to real quick circle back to to them sure. re- to them introducing the first three and being very very torn about how I felt about that because for years, decades, that was never going to happen. You were never going oh, no. to see the first three episodes of Star Wars, and you just lived with it, and you had this great little fantasy in your head, and I was old enough at the time when they when they you know released Phantom Menace to to realize this is no matter what it is it's not going to live up to what I would yeah, hope and think and want it to be mm-hmm. because honestly for 20 years you you lived with the fact that you will never ever see what's it's in the briefcase point, yeah. you'll never see it <laughs> So. Or the trunk, yeah. Or the trunk. Yeah. Now, now they're going to do spinoffs. What do you make of that? Uh, apparently, the first one is going to be Boba Fett. Boba Fett in I'm his right. own. I'm all right with that. You know, what it comes down to is the franchise reason, that shit, man. <laughs> the reason I watched Go Disney Go. The reason I watched Star Trek Voyager, even though I hated it, it was Star Trek. You know, um, anything Star Wars, I'll, I'll give it a chance. You know, I want to see. You know, the Clone Wars cartoons that came out. I actually didn't watch those as much as I probably wanted to but anything more star wars anything that will go into that world anything that will show us more jedi or more ships or whatever i i'll give it a chance i'm you know? totally foreign to all that stuff the clone yeah. wars the comics yeah you know the tv shows and all that, the, the, uh, the novels even the outside of like Timothy universe Zahn. yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of i'm not really into the expanded universe either um and i hear they're not even going to do that with the with the next movies they're they're ignoring all that you know, Han and Leia getting married and having kids are ignoring all that. They're going oh, really? to do their own stuff, yeah. Now, it's uh, it's going to be... The Clone Wars apparently are going to be wrapped up on Dark Horse Comics. Okay. And then they're going to move the whole thing over to Marvel because Disney owns it. So Oh, they're that taking every They're bringing everything in. They're bringing sense, it all yeah. in. They're going to own it all. So that hopefully they sense, do the yeah. right thing. You know, yeah. it's funny why you guys are talking about the world and seeing anything from Star Wars because you want to see more of that world. I had to equate it in my mind with Bridget Jones' diary, and then I sort of started to understand your passion. Because I'm like, you know, I'd like to see more Bridget Jones stuff, honey, wouldn't you? Honey, whatever what? gets you there. Whatever they had, gets they you. Had, I'm just saying. They had two movies. So, right, yeah. and I liked the second one a lot, too. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be neat the if we Empire could, Strikes like... back of Bridget Jones. Yeah. <laughs> I would be totally fine she with, like... She gets frozen at the end. You have to... <laughs> that would be fine with me. Well, then they made a third book, and they killed off and Mark Darcy. And they killed Darcy. off Mark Darcy! So there, you got... Do you happy but with that? But I don't want to see that, no. No. No, don't kill off Mark Darcy, but That's... I'd like to see in between what happens, and in my mind, I have, like, mm-hmm. stories going on, too. There's room for prequels, too. Yeah. Uh, well, Robert has uh, Padme available on Vimeo. Vimeo. And, and, and I, uh, as I left my house, I was uploading cheap seats to Vimeo. We'll yes, see oh, excellent. We'll see if it works this time. I had a lot of trouble with that. But uh, yeah, Padme is on Vimeo. And um, My Name is Darth is on there, too, I think. My Name is Darth. I didn't see it. But okay, it probably I'm, is. My Name is Darth. A parody, I was looking for cheap seats. A parody, so. thank, a, a parody of My Name is Earl. Uh, oh, I love My, my Name, name is, is Earl. Darth. Uh, we got to actually use the actual hotel. Where motel is it? Is. It's... Um, 
I want to go there I, when I'll people you, visit. I'll, I'll get you the. Oh, the okay. I, I love that. I forget that where shit. it is, but it's not that far away. Oh, um, I love that. Okay, I have to get that. The actual motel, and um, I did an E Trade commercial with my little daughter, who was almost two at the time. She plays a little baby, Saw baby, that. baby emperor, and I'm I'm Darth Vader. So <laughs> I didn't uh, see that. But uh, mo- how many? How many uh, have you done total? Uh, fan film. Count it up. Uh, How many stars? trophies does he have? <laughs> I know. Well, two well, that two, we know of. Two, yeah, exceptional I ones. I think about five. I did a sequel to Cheap Seats. I did um, My Name is Darth and Empire Trade. Uh, I did the Menacing Phantom Clones with a uh, friend from Universal uh, that uh, I think Jamie knows, Marcellus. Yeah, we did Menacing Phantom uh, Clones. Tour guide? Yeah, he's cool. yeah it, was, it was 11 minutes long. It was an epic. Um, <laughs> it, it was shot almost entirely at my house, too, which is in, in, incredibly strange. Um, so that, I count that. And I, ex- I did a Pepsi commercial that has Star Wars elements. It's uh, set in the future. It takes the little girl from the 90s who used mm-hmm. to, uh, Haley Eisenberg, who used to come the up. The one and, with the curly hair? The one with the curly hair. Curly Sue. The curly there Sue, exactly. She would come up and order a, a beverage, and when she didn't get the Pepsi, she would start talking like Joe Pesci or The Godfather. Mm-hmm. So we did her older talking like Darth Vader. And my wife, who is actually the spitting image of Haley and I with the hair, um, did that. And uh, another friend of ours, Kevin Blake, uh, did actually played three parts. He was friend three, of the show. Three, friend of the show, oh, Kevin oh, yes, Blake. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he played three clones uh, at a place called. I've seen that. Burger. Yeah, I've seen that one too. Yeah. Uh, so anything? Anyway. Anything new? You inspired to make anything new? I have some ideas. I'm <laughs> currently on hiatus, uh, stay at home dad with my daughter. But uh, um, show her Star Wars movies. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, oh, yeah. I haven't gotten her fully into the Star Wars uh, stuff. Um, want to? I want to introduce her properly. Uh, so we're probably going to watch episode four first. So, um, but she watched. She watched all the way up until Darth Vader choking Admiral. What's his name in in episode four, and then she got bored. So we're going to try. Again. She was two. She was two. Though, so. Oh well, then that's a good excuse. I remember it's hard to introducing when you're uh, two. Yeah, yeah, I remember introducing my loved family member to uh, E. T. when she was twenty-one. I hadn't. <laughs> seen I showed that. Karen <laughs> E. T. She hadn't seen it oh, up till I then. Where are you living? I I've... showed my dad The Empire Strikes Back a couple of years ago because he had only seen Star Wars with me in the theater back in the seventies. Wow. And I said, have you seen any of the others? He goes, no. I'm like, Dad. I should check in on that because my dad took me to Star Wars, yeah. too, in the theater. See if he's seen the other ones. Yeah. He still hasn't seen Jaws. Actually, I know he has. Actually, I went with him again. He still hasn't <laughs> seen Jaws because he's a scuba diver, so he won't, he won't oh. do that. You know, but that I told sense. him that they're on a boat. They're not underwater. So. Yeah, but it doesn't Ish. go well. <laughs> it does, <laughs> it does not go well. It does not go well. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I want to burn through okay. a, a quick edition of something we can get everybody involved in here. <laughs> what did you see this week? I, Paul, I, I thought we, yes, I, I thought we were back to the original, and we were happy with the original. No, we're no. changing it up. New no, year, okay. new theme for what did you see this week? Well, so cipher rage table. went over so well that we decided to use cypher that. Rage. As I love the cipher infant. rage. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> best band. That's a ever. ringtone. <laughs> totally <laughs> ringtone. It totally is. So I, I put to the table. What did you see this week? It's been uh, a couple of weeks, but I don't know if you saw anything over the holidays worth bringing up to the table. Come on. I will say that yes. I don't know why I waited two months to see Nebraska. But that movie is fantastic, so definitely go and see that. Complete 180 from Star Wars movies. Very simple, <laughs> slow, black and white, you know, Midwest. Mm-hmm. But uh, a totally great, confident film from Alexander Payne, who does nothing but make great movies. In a year where the greatest filmmakers are continuing to be great, like Paul Greengrass and Martin Scorsese, mm-hmm. he's made another great film. So you should totally see that. Lee, we haven't heard from you in a while. No, I saw... Um, very coincidentally, uh, I saw a bunch of Star Wars movies. Oh, wow. now, Shut up! Are you kidding? No, no. The Spike Spike Channel was running oh, yeah, like right. all a, of them. Yeah, yeah it is a season. And it reminded me of two things, and I'll be brief about it. One, I think honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen Star Wars on TV, which is ironic because my parents would always say, "I don't need to take it to the theater. That'll be on TV in a year or two. <laughs> Star Wars was never, never on TV. Never on TV. My like parents said the same it thing. TV. Was it yeah. was it that quickly? Well, it was. There was some. I was actually. Uh, I don't mean uh, to go ahead. Like, I was actually reading about this. There was there there were contractual agreements that Star Wars would not be on TV until after a certain amount of time. Wouldn't be on VHS till after a certain amount of time. Then Empire Strikes Back, and I think it was like at least five years. But while they're making Empire: Return of the Jedi, they're like. That's when Star Wars came. came that on thing TV. was never on TV. That's all I heard. And he from my said he would is. never release it on tape. Oh yeah, and then he did. Yeah. You know, oh. So the, the the other point I wanted to make is that for years I labored under the false premise that I liked Star Wars better than Empire, and I don't know why that was. But every time I watch Empire, I'm like, this is actually there's so much more that's going on in this movie, and it's a better 
film from beginning to end, and it's got a lot more happening to it. And I was reminded of that over the weekend. I'm like, oh, I do enjoy Star Wars, but yeah, Empire's a really strong, and it has a lot of memorable moments and scenes and things that, mm-hmm. I, for whatever reason, I just dismiss. And it kind of set up the archetype for, you know, have a great movie, go dark, and then come yeah. back for a yeah. third. You know, it's like that, that whole transition. I mean, I don't know how many movies have done that before then. You know, very few movies have a successful second movie. Uh, a lot yeah. of times, you have to wait till the third for it to be better. Oh, now know? that just brings up a whole Ghostbusters thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't think the third movie is going to be better. I'm I'm frightened of the third movie. Ugh. It yeah, scares well, hopefully me. Hopefully, we don't see it in many ways. Though I do like my sweatshirt. I like my sweatshirt, but more than I like <laughs> Ghostbusters two, the movie. But. Yeah, Murray won't do it, and that's probably he best. He wants to be a ghost, I heard. He wants to be a ghost in, in the third one. <laughs> yeah, and his character died, right? He and died. He ah! <laughs> and he'll be a smart ass, and that'll be probably okay with me. <laughs> and he can slime himself. Right? Why not? Uh, you had mentioned I saw Turbo. Who said that? You said that? I, you, well, you yeah. said it, and then you didn't take me. They so had. there was that ah! moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you didn't take me to see Turbo. What was the other one you saw? You live in Orange County Frozen. Now. He went Frozen. to see Frozen. Frozen. Saw, also good. Paul Animation and I like weekend. to see animated films together, especially when they're double features. Yeah. And, he and when not, they can sit together and hold hands. And he mm-hmm. did not invite me this time. So Aww. it stung a little. It stung well, a little. I took you to see Puss in Boots, which was great. It was amazing. Yes. And yes. then we also, saw, we also saw Rio right before. Rio was good. Yeah. These movies were about a Rio good. Oh, okay. You know? uh, Turbo <laughs> was... Well, I America went to see The Croods. They didn't see Turbo. Mm-hmm. I'm the vice versa on that. I like Turbo better than The Croods. Croods is like some crazy Neanderthal fun. movie, but it looks like Pandora. Mm. You know, so they just doing whatever. Hey, no one was alive then. Make the you know Jurassic ages look like whatever. People mm-hmm. walk around with the giant starfish on their feet, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's a cartoon. I guess they're going to do that, but still, it looked weird and it wasn't quite right. Paul Bugs Bunny was a bunny who walked on his hind legs. And he talked, didn't he? Yeah, and he had Son a carrot. And Turbo, anyway. Turbo was much you know funnier. One guy did all thought. the voices for that. Anyway, sorry. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> you were saying. Yeah. So, but uh, but Frozen was a return to great Disney music. If you love musical epic Disney a from lot of the eighties, Frozen. Uh, yeah, and and the nineties. Well, nineties mostly. Uh, yeah, it's it's back to that kind of thing again with the big structure and the and and you know love conquering all. It was great, mm-hmm. you know, and it looks gorgeous. So. I highly recommend that. And I don't need to because it's made like $600 million uh, worldwide. (laughs) So anything else from anybody? Uh, I saw, is it Jiro? Jiro Dreams Jiro of, Dreams of Sushi. Dre, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. I saw that because a long time ago, Lee said, there's this great movie you have to see, and I just finished watching all of season five of Breaking Bad. So that took me a, a couple days, and that was awesome. Um, Santa Claus brought me that. But You're then, welcome. Thank you, Santa. But then I was kicking around in the old iTunes, and I wanted to watch something else, and Jiro Dreams of Sushi was on. And my gosh, I don't like reading movies. I'm not a big fan of that, mm. subtitles. This is a reading movie. Yeah. And a matter of fact, I had to stop watching it at one point because I was getting a little tired and my <laughs> eyes kind of kept nodding off. And I'm like, no, I have to read what's happening. And I really liked it. It, it We liked it for different reasons, I think, because I found it kind of sad at the end where the um, older son at one point, the dad says, I hope he does the same thing every day for the rest of his life. And I just thought that just sounds awful <laughs> to do the same thing every day. for the, I don't care if it's, I mean, wow. Because that's what Jiro did, right? I mean, Jiro, he, he yeah. runs the biggest yeah. sushi joint in no. Japan. Well, no. well, the most as far as acclaim. I think it's the cost, greatest. Right? Meaning, it was the first sushi restaurant to receive the three star Michelin rating, which is interesting because in order to when you uh, when you watch the movie, most of the movie is about Jiro being this fantastic sushi chef, and he is, and he does take it seriously. But at the very end, they tell you that when he won all three of those awards, which is the only sushi restaurant ever to do this, didn't they say two of the three times his son was the one making sushi? Yeah, he wasn't even the one he making the sushi. He wasn't even making the sushi. Yeah. That was, but now I think a couple other sushi restaurants have won the Michelin three star, but he was the first to do it. And, and it's the, the, what I admired about it, first of all, I just think I want to go to Japan because I like order and structure. <laughs> they just seem to have their shit together. Um, but yeah, that, that thing, the, the thing of focus and dedication and repetition and just, you make rice for five years before he lets you cut fish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. 
for yeah. five years. It's not a it's not a girl in Venice with <laughs> jean shorts <laughs> making your sushi. That's right. I just find that the craziest. Wait a minute. Thing, <laughs> you said jean shorts. I thought it was a woman named Jean Shorts. Uh, <laughs> jean Shorts named better. Jean Shorts. Awesome Even better. Sushi. I just find that crazy because I don't eat sushi a lot, but I've been eating it lately with Mike. We go to a place in Burbank called Wakano, and it's good. But oh, you look yeah, at it and you go and you go what I just. I, I, when you go and eat a big Italian meal, you can see the work. <laughs> this is uncooked. You know, it's laid on a plate with some sauce. But that's the thing. You know? If you watch this movie, you'll start to see that all of the other chefs oh, yeah. that are there do all the work. This is what I was saying. The prepar- work. You the cut, prep- a, you cut oh. a fish. Well, but there's apparently a lot of work to making raw fish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and love, it's even I, getting harder. I will watch the documentary just to know Please. what that is. <laughs> and it's getting harder now, they're saying, because of the overpopul- uh, the overfishing and the population going down. of the, the actual- radiation. The radiation, which is coming uh, to California, apparently, I found out on Facebook. So prepare everyone to enjoy the beach. It all tastes like 30 weight oil anymore, but that's okay. Yeah, well, who couldn't use a third eye, which I'm (laughs) sure I'll have now from all this. Maybe the fish will just be bigger now because they'll all be radiated. (gasps) They'll be like the ones in the movies, you know, like when the spider gets radiation, it becomes huge. Superpower fish. And super cute. And you won't want to eat cute Like fish. the no. uh, Stay Puffed Marshmallow. <laughs> oh. Nice. What did you do, Ray? Nice. What did you do, Ray? We'll get this guy laid. He's a sailor and he's he's in New York. All right. Uh, okay. Did you guys see anything? I saw the uh, with the legend of Walter Mitty. No, no, no. The secret, the secret, secret life of Walter legend. Mitty. <laughs> yeah, which is really important. Did you uh, see the original? No, I did it. And this is what I want to say is every time I tell somebody about it, they're going to tell I don't like Ben Stiller. And, oh, I, and I'm like, really? Because like that's him. so sad that even oh, this like is a good stuff. movie. And I told you that I thought 15 years ago, this is the movie that everybody's telling everybody to go see. Just because people are a little more cynical now. So, but it's a really good feel good movie. Mm-hmm. And it was it would have been the movie 15 years ago that the world would be talking about. Yeah. So p- putting that back at the same time as like Pretty uh, Pretty Woman or something, you mean? Or? Sure. Yeah. Because that was when that kind of fun movie and, was out. And it's the same thing. At the mm-hmm. Pretty Woman, you kind of have a, a good thought. Like my mom is genuinely surprised at like the, at the wedding singer when Drew Barrymore and I Adam love said the wedding she goes, singer. "Oh my God!" For a while, I didn't think it was going to happen, but they get together <laughs> at the like she genuinely is. I used uh, to like surprised. those movies too. They so, don't happen anymore. As Paul pointed out, it, it's probably not a whole lot of surprises at the end of the Walter Mitty because you kind of have a you know good feeling it's it's going to end well. You maybe not know what that well is, but like Pretty Woman, you kind of hope that he's going to be with, with the, the prostitute yeah. and she'll be. Successful and as not, his and cap not ride. Have any sort of the, there's diseases. something a little contagious about his desire to be. I cinematic. said diseases at the same time uh, as you, you said go. contagious. Play to shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Euro <laughs> dreams of sushi. Okay, it's all coming around. <laughs> his, uh, his Stiller is just really wants this to be a big, expansive movie. You know, it's all it's got movie labeled all over it, and uh, and that, that that's a, even the location. Jump Paul. on that. Yeah. Like they're real. It's yeah. it. They're in real. They're in they're Afghanistan, <laughs> and it looks like it, right? <laughs> well, I will go on. Uh, I will defend all of the Ben Stiller detractors because I am one of them, and and I think I speak for all of us when I say it's not that we don't like his movies. When we say we don't like Ben Stiller, we don't like Ben Stiller. I get it. Yeah. Okay. I don't get I, it. What's I, he I, doing? He's, he's fine. Well, I, I, he's fine in a movie, and I'll watch his movie. I don't like Ben Stiller. Do you hate the fact that his wife looks like a perfect Barbie doll? Marsha Brady. I, she is hotty, hotty. You know what I don't... I, for me, personally, I think it's because he comes from a Hollywood family, and, and that always makes me a little a little uh, curious and I and listened to the suspicious. Howard Stern interview, and he had to audition for those roles that his mother got him auditions for. <laughs> and he had to get that part and memorize those lines. She didn't memorize them for him. Okay, tell me okay, this. You're bringing tell me around. How did he get to be so good looking with parents like that? He, he does look very good yeah. for that. Well, yeah. when ugly people have babies, this is true, they is have some of like the cutest kids. <laughs> So my kids are going to be horribly ugly. I, I must, I must be ugly then. My, um, my kids adorable. Yeah, yeah she's but Brad, perfect. Brad Pitt and Anna Jewel, and I can't even say her name. Angelina Jolie's yes. kid. That that's supposed to be one ugly kid. Did they have it or is did that they adopted? find it? They no, found no, no, no. It's a, they it's, found a, it's a genetic it splice. Is this splice? Oh. Okay. Oh, that girl's beautiful. That's sad. Uh, all right. So, all right. oh yes, yeah, I, 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 I actually um, I saw Lethal Weapon the other day <gasps> on cable, Ooh. and it it. It's not a bad movie. That movie kicks your ass. It really holds up. What's the last yeah. time you saw it? Um, I don't know, five years ago maybe. Uh, uh, if, if not that, if, if but now soon. the LA uh, locations the LA, look more I, I familiar. Totally, right? I totally recognize cool? every place they were. It's a little but, uh, bonus for late screenings. But it was just, that. I mean, of course, *Lethal Weapons* one where I thought all three movies were, well, 
the first three movies were good. Four I didn't care too much about, but I, it was really good. I was watching. I was going, it's it's Mel Mel Gibson at his finest, and you know I just oh, I really enjoyed we, it. We I want saw Mel back. A, we saw a projection of it about five years ago in really? a theater, and it was packed. Wow! And you figure, well, how does this movie hold up in a theater? It was great. Wasn't it though? It's, yeah. it's astounding. That's I was, really, I was astounding. I remember by Richard Donner? Uh, yeah, Shane Black were there. Yeah. And it, that movie could get lost in the '80s, but it doesn't. It, it really, yeah. it's not like that like romantic bad. comedies did, but yeah, other yeah. action movies did. But that one somehow. I was just going to say this is a perfect yeah. example of a movie that I don't consider a guy film. I love that movie, but this well, no Hercules difference. thing really. Yeah, because they when make Gibson him different now. Puts the gun in his mouth. He sells the shit out of that. Oh and if gosh. you don't buy that, he buys that for a second. It's yeah. just another dopey movie. Yeah. But when he's on the edge like that, and you and you it sets you up, you are up for. Anything now, yeah. the rest of this movie. Yeah, it was awesome. a great film. The only thing that ruins it is the cell phones. They, oh, they were right. big ones. Yeah. 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 I told for this shit. They'll replace Riggs. them. They'll what replace does he always say? Riggs. Wait, 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 Riggs. 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 They're just going to replace Riggs. all those cell phones with guns, do, Paul. Do you want to yeah. <laughs> jump? Do you, do you want to do it? Do That's it? great. That's, That's a great scene, too. Yeah. No, man. What are you, crazy? Whatever happened to that guy. But the jumper. But Yeah. Whatever happened to Mel Gibson? Damn it! Yeah, I want yeah. him back. I do too. I want that Mel Gibson back. I want. I know. I don't want the weapon rigs, pre even pre back. Braveheart. You know. I, want I don't want him back. little parts and machete and expendables. I want Mel back. Yes. Singing detective. I want uh, that Mel back. Do you really? <laughs> I want Gallipoli. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, let's go out in epic fashion with Karen's... Oh, by the way, 47 Ronin sucked. All right, so let's go out in epic fashion with Karen's weekly look comment. at the birthdays. Had a what? Was that? He had some comment about a... Oh, I, I wanted to... Can we go back to this? I wanted to comment on yeah. the radio tower thing. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, tell Karen, us, you're tell on hold. Us. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Um, I yeah, I was just going to... I wrote this down because I wanted to... You talked about recently trying the, the radio mm -hmm. tower guy wire thing. I heard about it when I was 12. I went out immediately... Found the telephone pole and did that myself. And I, it was one of those things where, you know, I'm watching, you know, the making of whatever. And I went, ooh. And so I run outside to see if I can do it. And I got a little tape recorder and everything and did it. I think the microphone was wrong or something. I think he might have had like a, a, a clip on, a lavalier or something. But but I did it. And it, would, it sounded, except for the thunk of whatever I was using, it had that slinky sound. You know, it had that same sound. and and uh, But, yeah, I, it was I, – I think I made my – I take this back. I made my first Star Wars movie when I was 14. Mm. Yeah, I go. made eight millimeter film. Eight, eight millimeter, millimeter film. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and um, I tried to scratch on the laser bolts by taking the emulsion off. And you know how big eight millimeter is? It's like it's like that. <laughs> my God, so. you guys would have hung out together. Mm -hmm. if you... actually, I actually anyway. spent about six hours drawing Ghostbuster uh, yeah. on. I think you've seen <gasps> this footage of me with yeah, the Ghostbuster. Yeah. yeah. And I did it with a laser, and I painted it with bleach, <gasps> and it was six and a half hours. He made a flip book of how I was going to draw. Unbelievable! Awesome. Awesome. You guys are That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was fourteen. It was. Um, Defenders of Earth, I think it was called. And now kids at your at that age, they play video games. They don't. They do don't make anything. their own stuff. But we were no. talking about the free software that they were going to give to kids and kids in schools and stuff. Now kids will start. I I met kid. Okay. No, go one, ahead. One more story. Yeah. Um, I think it was when we were at cheap or for cheap seats. Um, the award ceremony. Uh, two 14 year old kids and entered in entered a movie called Fan Film, and uh, it was about it had little fans in it or something and uh -huh. i forget what the whole pre pre premise was two kids came up to me afterwards and said says hey you know what can you what kind of advice can you give us about how to get into making movies i went dude you did it if i had the stuff you have now when i was 14 years old are yeah. you kidding me because they're using they're using iMovie and and their cell phones and all that sort of stuff i said you've done it you need to keep doing what you're doing with this because you have made this movie, and you've got all the, the tools for it. And I said, you got into this contest. You know, you're, you're, you're in it, and you did it. And I was just I was astounded that two 14-year-old kids had, had made a movie that got the attention of these guys in the contest. If I had an iPhone, man, the cheating I would have done in college. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Good Lord. Yeah, that's true. We've never, like, sent naked pictures to each other because we're married and... We're just I think near you each meant other. Like on tests and stuff. Oh yeah, on tests. The you know, cheating? like, like sure. sexing. It's not the marriage cheating. Is that where your mind went? I'm talking Karen? about in classes. No, I'm talking to oh. each other about like. <laughs> I thought you were talking about in my like how people oh, date. Man. No, I'm talking about how people date and they send texts that are sex. Being married, we missed all that. Right there, I don't Clyde. sext my husband. But we have iPhones. But we, yeah, we better. Start. You want to take? I can take a picture now. My shirt. All right, I'll do it quick. while you can do we, birthdays. All right, all let's right. go to uh, Karen's birthdays, all right. everybody. Happy birthday, dear Bradley. Happy birthday to you. Ah, 
Yes, that was not me singing, by the way. But it's a great way to start off the new year of birthdays by listening to Mary Hart of Entertainment Tonight. Oh, that's who that was? Wow. And 2,000 other people singing happy birthday to Bradley Cooper at the Palm Springs International Film Festival. So Bradley Cooper is our birthday bur- boy first this week. And he's the only man that I know that can pull off a seriously tight perm. Bradley turns 39 but can play anywhere from pretty boy in Sex and the City to ultimate pretty boy in the A-Team. He was in Sex and the City? Yeah, he played one of Samantha's boy toys early on. Really? Oh. And then years later, plays Face Man in the A-Team. Oh. Somehow, Bradley was one of the lucky actors in Hollywood that managed to trudge through a series of shitty movies and slowly make his way to the top of the food chain with Limitless, Silver Linings Playbook, where he was nominated for an Oscar for Best Actor, but he lost to Daniel Day-Lewis for Lincoln. I mean, obviously, we all saw that coming. And currently, he's in American Hustle, which, have you guys seen that? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, no? Oh, I my saw. gosh. Of he the ha- perm you speak, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. my God. That per- Have you seen it? That, that movie's all hair. Perm. <laughs> That perm, rem- as Bale, I was, yeah. Yeah, his hair is amazing. As I was watching the movie, I could smell his perm because <laughs> there's just a really distinct smell that you have to deal with for hours when you get a perm. And I swear to God, he's fantastic in it. But in that movie, we were talking about Paul and I that American Hustle is is tricky because you don't want to really see him get taken advantage of. You don't want to root against anybody. Yeah, everybody's kind of. Great. I kind of like everybody in that movie. So then when they start double crossing, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know what. I don't want know, them to. It's good to see him get up that. by Andy Garcia and yeah. Ocean's Eleven. But in this, I didn't know who to root against. It was crazy. Yeah. Now, Lee, I know how much you like it whenever I tell you about when people get naked in movies. So, uh, I like this, yes. Yes, it's important because I've told you about, gosh, uh, that Sally Field. I told you when she got sweet, naked. Sweet, sweet Sally Field ass. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know this is going to be a guy. All right, here we so go. in 2002, Bradley Cooper showed his naked behind in a scene from the movie Bending All the Rules. So I was looking that up today on the porn site. It happened to be on a gay porn site. So. Bending over the boys? Uh, Jamie, Bending you what? looking that up right now? <laughs> I already have it. Oh, good. Good girl. It's your wallpaper. Mm. Next Dude, up. are you gay? Dude, are you gay? <laughs> Let's wish a happy birthday to another Hollywood pretty boy, Dustin Diamond. Ooh, Screech. Yes. Wow. Dustin turns 37 but can play anywhere from Screech. On Saved by the Bell to who? Screech. Exactly. Who? What? Didn't he do a sex tape? Ah, yeah, he he's currently in pre-production for College Fright Night and A Dog for Christmas, which I will probably see, and I can tell you guys about that when I see that. He was also in the movie Made. Oh, really? As himself, <laughs> uh, starring Vince Vaughn and John Favreau, wow. and they're in line to get into a club. It's really funny. They're in line to get into a club, and the, and the bouncer doesn't let him in, and Dustin Diamond comes in, and they, hey, come on in, and, and Vince Vaughn's like, really? You just let Screech in? You're not going to let me in, <laughs> Screech? <laughs> He's actually the guy I hired to do the Battlestar Galactica voice, too. So. Oh, yeah? yeah. You hired Dustin Diamond? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. I have a theory. Very cool. He's very disguised, but yes. I have a theory. He's a really easy guy, right? Like, great. Easy as in how? <laughs> <laughs> he's easy going, and he's he very unpretentious. Cool. But didn't he do that thing where his house caught on fire, and he asked for money, and then it turned out to be fake? Oh, that was oh, him? I don't know if it turned out to be fake, but I know that he needed money to uh, save his house in Wisconsin or somewhere. Yeah, saved by the house, right. Sem- yeah. <laughs> saved by the house. <laughs> Uh, I, I know that he raised money, but I don't know if it was fake. I it saw was that fake. a little bit. It turned bit. out to be fake. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. But I, it, Lee is uh, coming up with a little something that I was going to bring up that it has been rumored that Dustin has making a name for himself in the adult film industry, and he's quite hung. Now, Lee, I know you watch the porn. The porn so I do. So yes. I wanted to know if you could tell me about his man mate. Have I you have, seen it? No, I, I have... Uh, Eight, not come across, no pun intended, his man meat. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And my selections usually tend to be more female centric. Oh, like Sally so, Field. Yes. Yes. Some sweet, Some sweet <laughs> Sally Field sweet ass. Sal- well, I find it funny that he was born with the name Dustin Diamond because it's already a porn name. And according to IMDb, his nickname is Dirty Sanchez. Happy now, birthday. Now, I've heard, everybody. I've heard, yes. heard things about that. Like, what so he are did, you talking about? Well, he did a porn tape, right? He did like a sex tape. That's what I heard on Stern. Girlfriend. I think so, yeah. Right. And, well, and it worked for the Kardashians. Everybody should be making yeah. them. James got one. And that was his signature move. From what what are you talking about? Shut up. That's what I thought was the rumor. His signature oh. move was the Dirty Sanchez. My gosh. I know that no one else in uh, that show, what was that thing he was on? Saved by the Bell talks to him. Maybe that has something to do with it. I know. It, we're making Robert blush. I'm fine. And lastly, let's wish a happy birthday to the great Leslie Dilly, who turns 72. Let's. Now, guys, do you know who that is? Mm. And when I say guys, I mean you two. Leslie Dilly turns 72. 
I'm guessing it's a Star Wars oh. related thing. Cantina band. Here's a, oh, here's a <laughs> She was the green aunt. chick. Uh, no, it's a dude. Cantina. It's a oh, dude, Leslie. That was Femi Taylor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew that one. <laughs> no, here's a couple of hints. He's from Rhoda, Glamour, and Wales. Guys? This nope. Is this a guy? Yeah, it's a man. He played a small part as the waiter in Deep Impact and the governor in Pay It Forward. Nope. All right, how about this? Both he small was parts. <laughs> both small parts. He was a production designer for The Empire Strikes Back and won two Oscars for Best Art Direction for Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And he was nominated for three Oscars for Alien, The Empire Strikes Back, and The Abyss. And today is his birthday. Oh, I know wow. him. He was a production designer for Star Wars. Right? Uh, <laughs> very nice. Very Paul nice. and I went out of our. W- <laughs> We went yeah, out of our way. That guy you know. You know that guy. That guy. That was we went Denver. out of our know. way to make sure we could find somebody. We knew somebody this week from Star Wars in some incarnation had a birthday. And it turned out to be our friend Leslie, Leslie Dilly. So happy birthday oh, to you. That is some research you have. Hey, yeah. It took a while. Wow. I had to click on every name of the cast on Wikipedia. <laughs> and get so down, found Get it. out of them. Get into the wow. tech, you know, yeah. and finally the production designer. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well done, Karen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, very Excellent. Much. Very impressive. Yeah, All Paul right. did that part. I just talked about porn. Thank you. All right, a well, lot. that uh, wraps another movie showcast. Together we are the movie guys. Individually we are. Okay, we guys this time. In. And let's take this baby out. All right. There you go. Nice Follow try. us on Twitter at The Movie Guys, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Movie Guys, as well as on YouTube, iTunes, and SoundCloud, Vine, Instagram, Google+, LinkedIn, all that shit. And look for Padme on Vimeo, as I mentioned. Is Rain Wilson in that? No. He's listed as being in Padme. That's how you Have you seen that before? I, 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 I think I had to send him a thing saying he's not in this. You know, I, I think he it's wants Wikipedia. to be in it. It's one of those people that <laughs> John, like John, troll. John Ratzenberger was almost in Cheap Seats too, but that's another story. But uh, he was oh, also in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's because it's a parody of Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, he Back. doesn't have a birthday this month. Is the music still playing? I can't hear. Yes, keep okay. twirling. Keep twirling. No, Rain is not in that. Uh, thanks to Mike Nichols and to Robert Yay! Reeves, everybody. And a special shout out to past guest on this show and a friend of the show, Robin Mountjoy, Woo! director of Quick to Duck, has completed a short film called Contest. So look for that in festivals. It should be making the round soon. And thanks to Steve Schultz for his writing contributions to the show every week. And remember, you can always find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Thanks for listening. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Sorry.